indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, Joe, are you over there? You up and running, Joe. Yes, yeah, we don't have to. Okay. We don't have to do the thing. Yes, yes, this is okay. considered a live. That's okay. just for streaming. So All right. We can go back to the norms. Wonderful. <laughs> well, the other that. was good too. I, I, I got in that. It went very well. Uh, go ahead, Kylie. Gilman? Yes. Merrick? Yes. McKellar? Yes. Mauser? Here. Brown? Here. All right. Looking for approval. I'd like to motion to approve the agenda the addition of the two items on the blue sheet the Oakley. Village of Garfield Township and the East West Corridor Phase Two. Under information items, that means you. Support. Motion and support. Any discussion on that? Kylie? We'll do roll call. We'll just stay in that realm for a while. Okay. <laughs> Eric? Yes. McKellar? Yes. Mauser? Yes. Gilman? Yes. Brown? Yes. Conflicts of interest. Any conflicts of interest? <coughs> Hearing none. Kylie, uh, rules for public comment. No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we okay there, Phil? No, I was getting excited for the uh, appointments. <laughs> <laughs> Any person may make an advanced appointment with the board regarding road commission topics for a regular or special meeting in accordance with the Open Meetings Act. Mm -hmm. If an appointment is made, the topic will be an agenda item. The following applies to public comments. Please state his or her name and address. Topic must be relevant to the Road Commission. Individuals are allowed to speak once for up to three minutes on a single topic, which may be extended by the chair. A group addressing the board requires a designated spokesperson who may speak up to 10 minutes. The board will not act on any item from the public that is not on the agenda. Very good. Well, I'll open up public comment. Any member of the public like to speak? There will be another chance at the end. Okay. Wait till the end. Thank you. We just have one thing that did come in a uh, letter here that we will distribute to the board. Okay. Um, basically, it's something staff can handle, though. They're talking about concerns with their condition of their local road, and they want to be able to get a. They say they're asking us to assess the situation and provide a written response as to what course of action would resolve the situation. Okay. So it's something staff can handle. Okay. Um, it is Gingerwood and Huckleberry Court. Do you know where those are? Are you sure it's coming in? Gingerwood and Huckleberry Court. Okay. Yeah, it's the Pine Pinewood Point Association. Pinewood Point. That doesn't help either. We will handle it. Okay. With staff. All right. Um, we. Action items. We have a couple of appointments. I don't know. Are our appointments here? They are. They're oh, both right. on both Zoom. Them. Okay. So. All right. Um, we're about two minutes <laughs> early for the first one, but uh, the the first one is uh, our annual audit report. So I guess we can move forward. Can everyone hear me there? Yeah, we need to get rid of the uh, the meeting notice because it's blocking it, so we can't see. Can you go adjust the speaker view. There we go. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to be with you this evening. My name is Peter Hefner, and I represent Vredeveld Hefner, the firm of independent certified public accountants that conducted the audit for. Grand Traverse County Road Commission for the year ended December 31st, 2019. Fortunately, we were on site before the lockdown occurred and we conducted our field work and then we awaited a change in the accounting standards that occurred uh, last month and uh, issued the report. A uh, number of accounting standards were delayed and some are going to actually be withdrawn. So we knew of that, spoke with your staff um, and Phil thought that it would be appropriate to await their changes. Um, with that being said, um, I'm going to point your attention, and I don't have a slide for it, but in the audit report itself on page one is our opinion on the financial statements. And I'm just gonna summarize that opinion. It's at the very last paragraph. 
on page one, and it is the, our opinion that the financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position, results of operations of the governmental activities, the major fund, as well as the aggregate remaining funds in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. And that's what I would refer to as a clean opinion. That's you are following the required standards and your staff is preparing the financial uh, information ultimately without any significant adjustments on our behalf. And that is uh, not common. We uh, commonly find items that need adjusting, but not in the case of the Grand Traverse County Road Commission, which is positive. Um, in addition, at the very back of the report, last page, is our opinion on your compliance, um, or I'm sorry, on your system of internal controls over financial reporting. That opinion is required under government auditing standards. And I, I would just say that that opinion is boilerplate. We did not identify any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses that we needed to bring to your uh, to your attention, which is also a positive uh, um, result of the audit process. So, so those are two very good things. A clean opinion on the statements, clean opinion on the system of internal controls over financial reporting. Um, with that being said, I put together the slides that we typically look at and it just provides a historical perspective. If, if it's okay with you, I'd like to walk through those with you and see if there's any questions I might be able to answer. Would you go to the first slide for me, Joe? Not the, the uh, introductory one, but the next one. Perfect. I can see what you can see on the screen there. Um, and this slide is providing a summary of all of your um, investment in capital assets, net of the debt outstanding used to purchase those assets. And as you can see, again, this year, substantial um, investment in capital. This is roads, bridges, uh, equipment, you know, garage improvements. So approximately $10 million of additional capital or $12 million of additional capital assets were put in place. Those assets are continuously being depreciated. So that drives that number down, but fortunately you've been able to increase it year after year. So um, the dollars are going to work in the form of infrastructure. Would you proceed one more slide for me? Perfect. This is a picture and it's a stacked bar, meaning the top line represents the total of all of your long-term liabilities. And as you can see, 2018, you had a significant bump up in those liabilities, the year of the bond issuance, and now you're driving those liabilities down. The first line, the green line represents all other long-term liabilities, that would be compensated absences and bonds payable. And the next component is the OPEB, which is being squeezed down and the pension liability that's being squeezed down. So uh, in addition to putting a substantial investment into the infrastructure, you've been able to bring your liabilities down as well, so positive. Would you proceed one more for me, Joe? Perfect. This is just a picture of the substantial revenue that you receive in a given year, you can see the bottom component, the blue line is your MTF, transportation funding. Then you have some local contributions, charges, trunk line dollars, and then federal property taxes and other. And you can see um, the, the numbers pop around a little bit, but you'll see there that the federal is what really drives that change over time for the most part. And if you have substantial local contributions, but the year you put in a bridge or you have a large uh, federal project that can pop the line up. That's the source of revenue that you received for 2019 um, from 2012 through 2019. The next graph that we're going to look at, this is a picture of what are the dollars being used for. So we can see are they being used on primary or local trunk line or other components of your operation? <clears throat> and you can see, you know, the primary is really the driver. That's where the state's giving you the largest amount of dollars. And then when you receive the uh, um, property taxes, typically those are being used for major streets as well. Um, but just a picture of where did the dollars go to? And when you do purchase capital investment, such as 
roads or equipment, that's included in this component as an expenditure. So this is your general fund operations. The next slide that we have <clears throat> is a picture of your fund balance over time and what's occurring. So to what extent is it non-spendable? The non-spendable component is inventory and prepaid items at the end of any given year. The next component we have is restricted dollars. That would be your uh, primary and local funding that is available to expend in the following year, as well as dollars associated with property taxes that weren't expended. And then to what extent do we have dollars that have been set aside as assigned? Typically that represents your following year's budget. To what extent have you budgeted to expend more dollars than you um, intend on bringing in or predict to bring in? And the last component is your unassigned fund balance. So the positive here is that you have approximately, you know, seven or $8 million. I have a, a picture of you over the very last year there but uh, dollars available for the following year's operation. So uh, you've been able to improve that over time and that's positive. Um, in addition to the graphs that we have, um, we have the report itself. The first two pictures that we were looking at are graphs. That represents your government-wide operations and that is the are the financial statements immediately following the management's discussion and analysis. The following slides represent just your general fund operation and it's the revenues in, the expenditures out, and the remaining bottom line or fund balance. Um, with, with that being said, in addition to um, the, the slides and the data that it represents, there are notes to the financial statements included in the financial statements. There are supplementary schedules at the back that the Michigan Department of Transportation require, and those are presented. And then we have the final component, um, which is that opinion on your system of internal controls over financial reporting. In addition to the report itself, we Peter, also, yes. Uh, we lost your slideshow. It ended with that last graph. Is it, Perfect. Is it, you can share that's, your screen. That's, that's yeah. just fine. Um, I would just point out that in addition to the financial statements, we provide communications to the board, which talks about our responsibilities and your responsibilities. We provide that in the form of a letter. Um, and the only item that we identified as an opportunity to assess your internal controls was the uh, approval process over journal entries to review that and see if it, it makes sense and is possible to have an individual knowledgeable of your operation. Um, reviewing the journal entries other than the preparer themselves. Are there questions I can answer regarding the audit process or what's included in the audit report? I know Phil has a vast knowledge of the information within the document as well. Any, any questions, anybody? Jason? No, no, actually. No, no. no. I mean, he, he, yeah. <laughs> well, it's the it's Bill, uh, Peter, you're pretty comfortable working with Phil on this too, right? Oh, absolutely. Phil provides us with a substantial amount of information. We can get information before we even arrive, which is helpful to have your statements prepared before we even begin to perform the audit process. So yeah, Phil's very, very knowledgeable and easy to work with. All of your staff, they go out of their way to get us what we need. <laughs> and we try to get out of their hair quickly too. Well, I, th I think everyone here is, is, is pleased with the results. Um, I, I, we didn't expect anything less than what we heard tonight, I don't believe. Um, and we would have been quite surprised if, if we heard something else. Um, so I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's been this way the last X number of years, three years. And uh, we're, you know, we're, we're pleased with the uh, financial um, status that we're in, and, and we think we're, we're doing very well. So we'll only get better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Appreciate it. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Peter. Okay. Uh, back over here. The second appointment, and we're right on time. Is, is he online also? 
mm -hmm. was having issues, okay, with the video, but we do have them on the line for phone. Okay, that'll work. Jeff, can you hear us? I am unmuted. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. I I will try the video here to see if that works too. Um, can you guys see me over there? Um, Not on ours. I'm not <laughs> sure. No, it says no it's okay. Working. Okay. No. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, we'll listen to you. Yes, that sounds great. And the ones, I didn't really have any, depending on your questions, I probably don't have any slides or videos, but Phil um, has a map of the service areas and maybe he can share that with you if that question comes up. Okay. You there? Yes. Okay. Am I leading this or yeah. Go ahead. am I just here for questions? Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. So um, this is a preservation mitigation project with, and we're partnering with the Grand Traverse Regional Land Conservancy. I will tell you they have been absolutely outstanding to work with. And we have, oh, about five or six sites. Each site is different location. That means it has a different uh, watershed or service area. I'm just going to use the term watershed because that's easier. But um, from the map, you can see. So the first project we're, we hope will be approved by Eagle very soon is the, the biggest one. That's Upper Manistee Headwaters. That's the old Camp Topico Boy Scout camp. So I'm real excited about helping the whole community, but also mostly helping us, you guys, and everybody else with mitigation on that. So Phil asked me a couple questions. So one thing to note is when you have future projects, you know, I, you know, only Eagle or the regulatory agency can accept the mitigation. So there's no guarantee, no matter what we do, that Eagle will approve any mitigation or any project in the future. But that said, it's broken down into three categories. Any of your impacts less than a third of an acre on a particular project, you can use any of these mitigation sites. It doesn't have to be in the, in the same watershed. But a project that's over a third of an acre has to be in the same watershed. So for example, the upper Manistee covers about half of the county. And if you had a project that was in the other half, you could not use that site. You would have to use another site. Again, I want to emphasize Eagle can, no matter what, they can always say no. But, and then the third type of project is called the red file, and that's impacts over one acre of wetlands. And if you were to have a really big project, uh, perhaps an east west corridor project, it would, and it was more than uh, one acre, EPA would also be involved. And that means EPA could also choose to say, this mitigation is not adequate, no matter what. Um, I hope that doesn't happen. And if it does, we can just find a, a site specific mitigation. But otherwise, all the sites we have cover probably 75 or 85% of Grand Traverse County. And I will say Eagle does has, have the discretion also, if the project is close, you know, maybe they'll let us use that site. Um, Any questions? Well, I, I guess I'd point out, um, we, we did have a couple of sites that had a significant amount of uplands that they're giving us an additional 20% credit bonus uh, for. And um, we requested, you know, because of that bonus, um, you know, it would increase the amount of funding to the conservancy. <laughs> so I requested another $100,000 to the Mission Wetland Board today to cover all those extra mitigation credits. 
Um, and Eagle has pre-approved the headwaters, which is the biggest one. Um, I think there was a, maybe a title issue that they're trying to uh, resolve on that one, but we're authorized to pay half of that now. And then once it's finally recorded through the Eagle's process, um, we'll pay out the foundation and the, the, the other 50%. And then the other sites should just start getting that down one after the other. And, and just to clarify for anybody that's on Zoom or whatever, the, the Road Commission paying out on a lot of this is a reimbursement. We're just the, we're, we're a pass through just, entity. We're a pass through entity because we took that upon ourselves to do that. And it's not coming out of our funds at all. We're so, the transportation pre mitigation sponsor because we're receiving uh, X51 funds. Correct. Right. So, so, so this, this money that we're actually <laughs> spending, we're not spending out of our dollars. It's just, it's out of the fund. It's already and, out of and, and we, we get paid back all that money. So it's really not not out of county funds. It's sure. the full money in district, right? It's just several counties. Yes. And it can still be used throughout the state, but primarily counties are at the top of the, the list. So, yeah. So, you know, somebody just jumping in would think maybe we're spending money on this and, and it's not the case. So, mm -hmm. so okay. Yes, correct. The the road commission is being reimbursed 100% for all the costs, including costs of your own staff. And, but also, but because of that, you're expected, you know, to share with all the other road commissions. And I, since road commissions are very collaborative agencies, yeah, I don't, you know, that's what we all want. And there's going to be a lot of credits. There's going to be, Probably something in the neighborhood of 70, 70 acres of uh, wetland mitigation credits. It's going to last That's a long great. time, more many decades. I'm yeah. very confident of that. Yeah, so I, I I I agree with your statement. I think you know all the road commissions would would work with one another here. So I I don't see that at all. It's all a simple money district. Yeah, I can't speak for the rest of the state. So anything else, Bill? I don't, unless you guys have questions for Jeff. I, I, I don't think at this time, you know, Jeff, I appreciate your time tonight. Yeah, great. This is a very, all my projects have problems. And this one is, other than the fact that it's taking longer than I hope, this one is having the least amount of problems. So I'm very excited about it. It's a great project. Oh, great. That sounds fantastic. So. You have you have a good evening and thanks again, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, bye now. Okay, consent calendar. Tyler. The consent calendar is used to expedite business <clears throat> by grouping non-controversial items together without discussion. Request by any person present to remove any item from the consent calendar for full discussion of agenda item are automatically respected. The action noted in parentheses for all items remaining on the consent calendar are approved by a single commission action adopting the consent calendar. The, re the manager recommends the following items be adopted. One, minutes. Two, payroll. Three, accounts payable. Four, financial reports. Five, reports and communications. And six, Act 51 financial report for 2019. Okay. Um, would anybody like anything full? No? Any member of the public like anything full? Okay, I would entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented. Second. Seconded by Mark. Uh, motion by Andy, seconded by Mark to accept the consent calendar as presented. Uh, we'll do a roll call count. Uh, McKellar? Yes. Bowser? Yes. Gilman? Yes. Merritt? Yes. Brown? Yes. Okay. Um, item C, nothing removed. So moving on to item D, I think uh, everybody had a chance to read, hopefully, the um, original. I just want to point out a couple of things, what we have changed uh, on the first uh, point. On the line three, um, the areas that have failed were substantially has been added. 
outside the boundaries instead of scope. Um, there was a rewording of a couple of things to cut out a couple of words, just in general to keep it under the 500 word limit. And then and the one on the topic or on the paragraph that starts out the author also, the last portion I have changed it to say the commission uses MTF funds and all millage funds to improve county roads. The author feels that Peninsula Township contributes more to roads than they receive, but the millage money and MTF funds spent in each township exceeds the contributions. And I changed that after the printed to from each township instead of in each township. And then the only other thing I changed is on the next paragraph, the first line, I said finally the east west corridor instead of just the study. So it's clear which study we're speaking of. Other than that, nothing has changed. I did not receive any comment from anybody other than Bill when he was sitting here uh, at the last meeting. So if this is fine, then I will pursue getting it submitted to <coughs> states the fact. Submit it. You, you're good, Mark? Yep. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, Bill? Andy? Yes. Myself? Yes. So um, I, I guess we'll go over it. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, item E is um, Kingsley facility. Okay, well, um, Carl and Wayne and Dan and Rick and I all met out on site on a very rainy, cold day the other day. It was nasty. It was and so I didn't make it to the location too because I was frozen and I was not planning on being out there. But um, we looked at the location in the industrial park. Um, we also looked at uh, potentially going into the Kingsley's DPW site and sharing some land from them. And then we did some more research on the property right across from the Kingsley garage where we currently sit. Um, we have some concerns with each. Um, we as a staff don't really like the idea of the DPW because there's not a flat piece of land out there. <laughs> And so the amount we would be talking about to level it out would be substantial. And then we don't have a problem with the fact that we share sand and salt with Kingsley. We do that now, but the problem we would have is we also have other materials out there and we would have a hard time reconciling if they decide, hey, we're out of gravel and we had a water main break, how do we determine how much they use of ours? And you know, we don't want to have anybody accusing anybody else of using. So we'd be fencing off the whole area inside their fence. And it just didn't really work as well as we would have liked because of the fact also of the terrain, which is just not conducive. Right. To and what and we need. that option, as far as the Kingsley DPW, came right that same day when we were on site and I made a phone call to the mayor of Kingsley um, for a little information. And he says, it was a possibility. So we yeah. just, we went down and looked at it. And you know, just spur of the moment thing, we were right there. So, okay. but the topography there is not good. Yeah. Um, yeah. The industrial park site is a decent site. It has the land we would need. It's about 15 acres. Um, it is, for 15 acres, it is pricey, but it has utilities already there. The problem is it has no natural gas. And for us to try and heat the type of building we have where it's going to be continuously opening and closing garage doors, even in the winter as trucks come in for everything they're doing, the cost to heat by propane is really, really, really a negative for us. And so to bring in natural gas would be pricey because it's a ways. And they didn't put natural gas in when they built the industrial park because of the expense of drawing natural gas into it. Um, otherwise, you know, for 15 acres, it's a it's a good size for what we would need. It would work out well, but it's just that propane is a kicker for us. That would hurt in the long run. Well, why don't we do geothermal? Well, and that's another option. We'll get into that, that next, is you know, because we talked about that too. Um, the the property across the street from 
our current location. It's 36 and change acres. Um, he had it listed in 2017 with Hagen, I believe it's Mark Hagen. Um, and he had it listed for 550,000. Now that's really high for that type of acreage. I mean, even at $10,000 an acre at 360,000. Yeah. It's, it's the pine trees. Yeah. The pine trees. So, I mean, it's a, it's pricey, but I mean, it's, it's got city regular sewer and city water there. The other issue at the industrial park, and Carl can explain what they suppose that they have out there. It's not really a sewer sewer. It's not, <laughs> they've got septic tanks with a holding tank that then gets pumped it's a, it's to the sewer. It's a force main system. And it's you, just pumping liquid, just no solids. Just a fluid, no solids. So you have, you have a septic tank, then you have a, uh, and actually, um, it's a pump chamber um, of different types, and, and it's pumped into a, everybody is on a force main, is what it is. And just pumping the effluent. Just the effluent. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so there's no solids. No solids. So at some point, you know, you're going to be pumping out the septic, just like you would in normal. Down there, didn't they? Yeah. Well, a, a lift station, of the size needed for there would have been, oh boy, back when I was doing it, that a cheap lift station was hundred grand. Yeah, and there are a lot more than that now. There up. I mean, every that affluent comes from this or some homes. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, and they're not, they're not, you know, you're not a grinding system where you're sending it through with their solids, you're just the liquid. So eventually you're going to have issue with clearing out septics and dealing with that. Whereas at the other end of the town, we would be connecting to a true sewer. So it would just be a dump it in and let her all go as is. So the options we had, obviously there are some issues no matter which way we go. Um, if we went to the industrial park, we'd have to look at a different way of heating. We'd have to look into geothermal and do some investigation. What's it gonna cost to heat this building with geothermal? How much is it going to save us and what, over what length of time would we actually get payoff for that and then the savings for the natural because we're on you know not on the natural gas line um, the other location the one across from us it's pricey but it's a lot bigger than what we need so we also contemplated if we get a permit from MDOT anyway, which we're going to need to have if we're there. We put in an actual road size drive, subdivide the plot into three, and then bring the sewer and the water in so that we have sewer and water on our property. And then the two, we take the back section of it and the two fronts on either side of that drive could then be sold off as unnecessary land for us and we could recoup a portion of that purchase cost. Did you but, say that the natural gas ran right on the highway there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have natural gas at our building right now and it's just right across the street. So, I mean, we could reduce the price of it effectively by putting in a big enough drive and it's not going to cost that much more to put in a slightly wider drive and we it's going to have to be built to handle our trucks if it can handle our trucks plowing it can handle anything pretty much so we could then have the front half of that and turn around and sell off maybe five to ten acre plots whatever on either side of it depending on what people would need so, so we'd that be sitting behind we'd be behind them retail up front and we could put yeah commercial and carl talked to the planning people for paradise and got some information on as far as what they'd be able to do there. Yeah, it's already zoned. Um, it's R2, but it, it, it also allows church, school, um, light industry, which he said we would fall under that, is probably what he thought Rogers looking. And, but he's gonna do a little more research. Um, and there were several other different things. So I, I think he, that piece or the, Industrial park ones, I think, as far as zoning issues, that I don't believe that we're going to have issues. Well, Carl, that's based on what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe we ought to uh, approach the school district about their wanting to have in the elementary school. They they were approached with that property and they turned it down. But it was the total amount. And well, so now be, I'm yeah. talking about we're going to be in the back. They can be in the front. Well, that would, that could affect where we put the drive. We need a bigger piece. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fine, but that's fine because we just need to have a route in and out for us, yeah, and we're probably going to have that back route out to the road behind us because that's where Kingsley would come in to us to get their sand and salt ending. Fenton, Fenton Street, where this property butts up to on yeah. the other one, one side of Fenton is is Paradise Township. The other side of Fenton is Village of Kingsley. It splits right down the middle of the road. That's so, so the piece we're looking at is in Paradise Township. Well, it just seems that it would make sense to have, not not have two vacant pieces of the road if we don't have to, that if the school district wants to go in here, we're gonna develop the site and then they can, they can we need to need to know from them of that 30 foot, 36, 36. Inches, okay. how much they need, how much we need to see if it actually fits. But it just seems like it would be great to have that done ahead of time. We could certainly yeah. talk to them. You know, that a lot of this information that I got been just in the last four days, <laughs> four or yeah. five days, well, everything just seems to be falling into place as far as people responded back. The, 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 natu the natural gas mm -hmm. and, and the municipal system is pretty cool. Just, yeah. just going back into why we're moving in a space, right? And it's predominantly space, yes. The other issue with the current location we're in is we have extreme, like right above us, we have high power lines, not just neighborhood it's lines. All, it's all things right behind us. And so we have hit that. Uh, twice <laughs> oh. with our uh, tandems on mowing. And so that's not a comforting feeling when you're a guy in a truck and someone's screaming at you because you just hit extreme high top power lines. Yeah. yeah. So it's just a bad location for those lines. Vaporize somebody. <laughs> and the cost and the cost to either lift those lines or move them is insane. I mean, it's a cost we're into the $200,000 range for them to be able to get those because they've got to go way out. You know, these aren't like normal neighborhood power lines. They're under tension or some tension, at least they should be. And they're right in our area. So we have always got that concern that someone's going to hit it. So we stack stuff in there so that you can't get into that. And that's how we basically have done it so we have only a couple of people that we allow to go in there and dump material just because we don't want anybody else to forget that these lines are here. And it's just not big enough, really. It's five acres. By the time you take the setback we need from the from M113 and you look at the back side of it, which is wetland, so that we can't really expand into the back of our full property anyway because we'd be filling in wetland with sand and everything else. It's just not really conducive to how we operate with the bigger trucks that we have now. When we had small trucks, single axle single trucks, axles, it was easy. Was built. That's yeah, the best you know, we best had best enough truck. room, we could leave, we had plenty of inside parking. We don't have that now, so the building footprint gets bigger and we have to start thinking about, you know, where do we park people when they come there? you know, to work. So it's just, it's just ideally to be able to have all of the material that we need there, we need at least 10, 15 would be ideal. Uh, to follow up with what the comment you made, Mark, I think, um, you know, we'll, we'll, I mean, we're still in the infancy of what we're going to do. I think both of you, you made the comment on the natural gas. I think that's a, a big thing on that side there, but then you also, Made the comment about talking to school. I think that's a, a very valid thing. That might be something where we can partner to do this, mm -hmm. um, possibly. And then also, I think we do need to look at, um, you know, is is geothermal even possible for the size thing that we're trying to do here? You know, I mean, it, it, and what are the costs? I'm sure it's possible. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Low cost, you know, the yeah. propane and geothermal. Oh, right. And then what happens is propane is going to give you some really immediate heat issues. You know, you you can get things cooking pretty quick, right? Uh, but you can supplement with the geothermal, which over time is going to save you money after it feeds itself back. So it takes takes a little while. Big up from cost. Yeah, 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 it, it, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. You know, I'm, I imagine probably, you know, just for that, for the building in there, it's probably going to be about 75 grand. A building that size, you'd be, you'd be putting down a, a well field, not a well. Yeah. Right, right. Unless you had a really big aquifer that, that moves a lot. Or that, which would be. I, I would think from what I've heard, we need to direct staff to concentrate or put their utmost efforts into the place. So the, so the, how far is the natural gas from the industrial park? It's, it's right at the entrance to the trailer park. The, the main that feeds Traverse City, yeah. that also feeds Kingsley, Goes right there. <clears throat> it's so you're basically. Um, so does it do the trailer park? Yes, yes, they have natural gas. Okay, so, so that, if, if a guy was going to go west, they would tap that main there, go west. Well, or east, okay, east, so east. they have got it. So, it's, so it's there. So it goes right up to their property. Correct. It's, it's right. Just the, the, what the piece we're looking at is to be on the other side of the whole park. Correct. Yeah, it's on the far east and north side. Why can't just be on the other side of the park? Um, well, like I could, uh, other than that wasn't the piece that they had offered. Well, you know, but we didn't we didn't uh, look at anything else. I, I think you yeah. know we should look at the entire park and put us right next to where it, it would still be. You know, I guess guy would have to explore. The tap fee is not. Well, it can't not, be any more than what we're talking about tapping in. Well, on the highway, you know, sometimes the utilities will incentivize uh, <clears throat> high use the development. Well, the thing is, right now, the park is not served by the gas. Right. It probably would make it easier to sell the park if yeah, the, if it right. were served by the gas. Mm -hmm. And if we were to if we were to act as an anchor, if we were to talk to the utilities, mm -hmm. Michigan or whoever the is Michigan. And say, look, we we would certainly be interested in serving as the anchor, but you're going to have to help us with uh, developing this this connection. Um, and and maybe that makes it financially it, it makes it a better deal because the 15 acres would be perfect for what we what we need, and it'd be two, perfect for two years access. ago. Yeah. They they capped that main but down on Garfield and Slocum Road, right? And then they ran it down. All the way past Boyce Road and then up Boyce. So just recent history, they've tapped that main because that main goes continues on through there. Mm -hmm. So you know, and I, I don't pass my house, which they will not let us tap into. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's interesting, good conversation because mm -hmm. that then if we can get the utility to let us tap in there on that property. That means that property now has a greater value, which means we negotiate a better price on the purchase. Well, that's that's an option, absolutely. Because if we're going to put the bill to make that happen, their property values go up. Right. Well, we, we would but need to be we, compensated for that. Which is either than the price of our, our property we're purchasing right. goes down. And then the only op the only obstacle there is or the only issue there is the fact that it's not really a sewer right. still. But we're not but, using that much water. But, but it's, yeah, yeah. It's, and that's way we're going to wash it. We do we'll have that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have that conversation. So, uh, um, yeah, so, I just, you know, I, I mean. Well, I mean, we can look, we can look at both. And with I the suggestion we should, that they say, and we'll, we can put together, um, you know, before next uh, board meeting, at least a preliminary, you know, cost, and Phil and I can work on generating some 
you know, hard numbers of what it would be. Um, I'm expecting an estimate on the beginning, sometime next week from Gosling, because Gosling is Grand Traverse Construction's engineer. So they're giving me a price of what it would cost to extend the water main and the sewer into our parcel if we chuck the one across the street from where we are. So I'll have that and that'll answer our questions, you know, as far as what we need to do to get that parcel on the water. Yeah, and you sewer. can look at each thing as a package. And then it would just be, okay, this is, yeah, yeah, breakdown of the yeah. total cost of where we need to be to bring to make it work. Well, it gives us two options. Yeah, then that's you're right. I'm picturing you know, a little white building you know, and a huge building. That's right. it right there. And I'm telling that's you what, right. that is a hundred feet in the corner of our town. It, oh yeah, it's, it's that's where it's at. That's exactly where it's at. It's just just off their and property. I, I wouldn't see any reason why we couldn't be on that side of the yeah. where that old barn is that we probably because they want us to have since we're going to get. No, well, that, that discussion were, wasn't had. No, had. But, but, but they but wanted that. to have that gas in there. That is, yeah. it, it is an impediment for them right now for an industrial complex. Yeah. Yes, it is. Absolutely. So well, we let's just let's pursue what, you know. Okay. Um, you know, I think we pursue that with, with DTE just for an idea, and, and you're going to have the idea the cost on, on the other. And, and I, it, in my opinion, either site would service our needs. Yes. You know, it, it, and and uh, one thing about the one that in the industrial park on the north end of that piece that they that that they showed us, mm -hmm. um, there is an easement out to Summit City Road. So we we would have actually two ways to get in and mm out -hmm. um, because there is an easement down there. Uh, the other piece across from us goes all the way across. So it'd be the same thing. We could have access both ways. So so okay. I guess we will pursue a little, little work to pursue all of that, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yes, yeah, between the between the three of us, we'll work on getting all of that information pulled together. Bill, you were allowed to work out of you today. And, and, and we're gonna make contact, make contact with the school also. Oh, yeah. We'll make contact with the school also. That everybody comfortable with that? Uh, all of them. Okay. Uh, all of just all the options. Yeah. Yeah, we looked, you know, that offer came out of the blue. And so we, you know, uh, Wayne went, I think Wayne went down there and Dan yeah. went down there yeah. and Rick did. We looked at it, but the topography there is just not friendly. Mm -hmm. it, it's the one usable area that would be the easiest to work with. We'd be budding right up to a residential. Uh, home property right yeah. there. So it, 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 it was, but the offer was thrown out and it, and it was, you know, you know, they wanted to partner, you know, so that's good. You know, so, you know. Okay. We all set there. Um, informational items here. Well, blue sheet. Oh, we'll do the blue sheet. Yep. Yeah. We'll jump to that. Um, okay. Item F um, Oak Leaf Village of Garfield Township. You want to start or you want to just I'll pick up. Um, we had a uh, uh, conceptual meeting the other day um, with uh, Garfield Township and developers and, and the Road Commission. Uh, this Oak Leaf Village is a uh, the two phase. The first phase is a senior living. Uh, it would be at the north end of the parcel, which is sandwiched uh, south of, uh, of Long Lake Road, um, west of Zimmerman. And um, then, then, then you got Eaglehurst over on the other side. So you've got right the uh, heritage estates to the south. So you got this large parcel in there. So first phase coming in and off for the senior, uh, it's the senior living, uh, no issues there. Work with them on that. Their second phase would be a TUD. And that second phase, Garfield Township Planning really wants to have their communities, their subdivisions interconnected. Well, this is a PUD, this is private. Uh, Garfield Township would like it, the, that PUD to be connected up to its colonial drive 
It's it's about the heritage it's a stub off of heritage sticks. And then also they would like that to be uh, uh, gone out or connected into Eaglehurst at the corner of Owl and Ravenhurst. Alderst, Ravenhurst. So that gets us into the questions of we have a stub road that is a that's intended, our interpretation uh, of the intent is to be uh, connected to future public roads. This is a this is a, a desire though of Garfield Planning Township uh, or Garfield Township their planning committee that they want to have this and of course we want to work with the township on it but this raises a lot of different questions of doing that um, you know how do you go off of a public road to a private road uh, um, in the middle snow plow summer summer's not a big deal but it's that winter time and, and, and vice versa so we they they kicked that around to that uh, they really wanted us to have this conversation so I approached Brad with uh, with this uh, we talked about several different potential options and then Brad uh, went and uh, talked uh, I believe the council and do not have a map. I mean, I've got a, I can forward you the email. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I can see we're talking about. Well, I, I guess I find it troublesome a little bit that we're going to put private resident traffic out on to a, 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 a a public road getting it's a local road while it's not out on a primary or anything like that. So let, let, yeah. if I may clarify, um, phase two the, the the PUD has a primary entrance onto Zimmerman. And that's the primary entrance and that's where everything is going. But it would have a stub going down to interconnect the, the subdivisions as as a, as an alternate or back way. Um, also, we connect up and, and provide uh, 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 sidewalk down into that uh, or to the edge there. Would have a multi-use path trail going all the way through the PUD, open and, and, and encouraged for for the public. Did Did we look at this before? Is this something that we looked at before? Uh, no, we have not. Okay. So so. so I talked to legal counsel. Let me tell you the three things that she wanted me to point out before you even start. Right. Number one, <laughs> because she was pretty adamant. Yeah. She does not want us to get into an agreement that allows their private contractor to plow our public road. Right. Because it's a liability right. nightmare and keeping up with insurance and making sure the people that do it can actually do it and keep the roads clean. So the option then becomes is you make them put a cul-de-sac at the end of the public portion of it before it gets into the private. And at that cul-de-sac, then we turn around and we head out. And that's fine because that's all then within our public property. They don't come on ours, we don't go on theirs. That's not their first choice. But the third option is, is we get an easement forever over that first section of their road until it hits the first intersection where we can actually make a turnaround and head back out. We sign a 99 year agreement with Garfield Township that at the end of every winter, Garfield Township will pay us what it costs us to do the snow plowing on that private section of road. There's another option. Don't let them do anything. But yes. And so, but what she wanted to make sure is, you know, it's we can't sign an agreement with the association. We have to sign an agreement with the township. And the township, how they get their money from them means nothing to us. So if we were going to do something where we're going to get reimbursed, because we can't normally plow private roads. Right, it has to be. We have to have that. Now. We have to recover so our the, the costs. Yes, and so the reason we justified right, that, right, right. we signed it with GreenLink, and we also were able to look there and justify the fact that we were saving ourselves money by right. going through there 
instead of having to turn around. But this is just extra exposure. This is just work. extra work for us. So we would have to be reimbursed. And the only one that we can seek reimbursement from is the township. So, all right. So the other option is that um, they become public roads. And so we, they, we say no to all these other options. And then they design them. We take the, uh, wait, what is that? Not a baby, you know. Bond, the bond. The bond until they get it up to specs and it becomes public road. When they're done with the development build out, it becomes public road. We assume it. it would be Here, here's there. the problem, Mark, in these subdivisions that these developers don't want to do. They don't want to make these roads that wide. Well, yeah, they have that You know, and Heritage Estates is a prime example. I mean, the, the grass comes right up to the up to the road, uh, and yeah, you I mean, know, and that's that's what they don't want to do. But I, I I agree with what you're saying. Well, then, and what they but, don't want to do. And what they want, they can't get unless they do it. Well, right. That's the way I'm looking at this because we had this. What, what is that? Uh, not too far from the off Hurtner Road. What is that? That same subdivision in real close. Are you mail? Yes. Yes. They came to us at the manor. We couldn't even right. get a single axle truck to turn in there. Right. Okay. But see, what they found out was it was a the association. It was a they wanted it to be public roads. So we stayed them up front. No, I'm sorry, but no. And you build them up to county road specs. We'll help you. You do it. Then we'll maintain them. I thought we didn't want to take any more roads into our system. Well, oh, no, no. Not any. We won't take roads into our system that are garbage. We'll take roads into the system that were built and designed and specs yeah. right now. Is that what the that, difference was? They, yeah, because okay. maybe what's happened over the years is we've had to repair. Right. All these, you know, what I call township roads, out in Green Lake. Look at all those roads. We can't even really get a pickup truck down. Right. They're technically ours, but we can't even maintain them. But we're not taking any of that stuff. That's what I thought we were trying to stay with. And the subdivision <laughs> roads aren't always built. So just, just so I have a clear understanding of the problem. I mean, stub road, subdivision. We don't do the stub road. Right. And they're trying to get us to do the stub road. We have a no, stub road there. This, the yeah. subdivision that exists currently does not have any interest in us necessarily doing that stub road. Right. It's the new subdivision that's being built. They want to connect to that stub road. Stub road a private road. Which yeah. is currently, the stub road is public, except for the last 20 feet, yeah. which is owned by us. But it is not certified as a road. It was never certified. It's just a warranty deed to us. So we own 20 feet by 60 feet. And they want to connect at that And they point. want to connect at that point. Do we have pavement there oh. now or is it can, grass? Can, okay. Could we abandon that uh, or sell that particular section and let that developer take that over at that point? If you want to go through a change of flat. Because that is a platted subdivision, which means you have to get into the fact of suing everybody in the flat to have it, which is a terrible word when they it say is, I understand. <laughs> but, it should once, yeah. once, right? right? So but we would have to go, they would have to go through the, the process. process of changing the flat. So if there are residents to do in that. that flat that didn't want that to happen, could they stop that from happening? If they enough don't. of them do, yeah. don't want it to happen, yeah. I've even seen the people Saying, I don't want that traffic coming up. I mean, oh, of all the options, right. uh, I'm just trying to think of a different way to handle right. this. I mean, it's either nothing, right? right. And just or and right. FYI, just so you know, we've already been approached. We are going to have a platted subdivision, not this year, but next, for a brand new subdivision that's being platted. And Steve has already started talking. And, and that because by the flat, statute, we have to. Take we don't have a choice. Okay. Just to make that clear, <laughs> but, everybody. So we're yes. getting more roads. So but, yeah, they, but, they but, but, but they have to build ours. Right. So right. I, I still think we should go back and say, you know, because they're going to, you know what's going to happen? They're going to come to us in 20 years. Take this over. Yeah. They're doing it now. Yeah. I, I agree with what Jason said, or not do anything. Well, the the thing is, the thing is, we if it's not our standards, we don't have to accept it. Right, right, right. And that's 
you know, if it's not up to our standard. But then it's not our, our issue. We're not upset. We're not involved with the, the current stuff. We're not involved with the new group. We're not involved with trying to figure out where the current truck is. Are we going to plow right. snow on private roads or any of that? We do the current stuff. We do plow here. But yes. I mean, right. because of that stuff, right? We either have to go we turn around, turn around there, or we have to go through and turn around and come back. I mean, we're plowing on private property through an agreement like we have. And I don't like entering and putting us in a position that we have to do something like that. No, see, see, right now, the so shovel, we, we don't maintain, we don't plow, we don't do anything. Oh, go ahead. So if right. we, if it's not even a road, it's grass. Yeah. No, so the, the last 20 feet are not grass. So if we're to do, then do try that over strict. and not have it ours, and the people in the current stuff don't want it to go to, to be changed, they can fight that. They're only going to buy it in the subdivision and have so that you can have, that's the whole point. But to change the plan, we, we if there's enough into, people. We, we ran into a similar thing there in, in yeah, Larry Township off the Silver Lake from the yeah. new subdivision. Oh, yeah. Went in and there was the stub. And the neighbors and, there was and all the basketball court. Oh, but, and, all the it, but, but that is already approved by the township and that, right. and it was up to, to our standards. Yeah. And so, and it was with the intent of hooking on to that. It, it, it was supposed to be. Every, everything was set up and it still was a problem, right? Ahead of time right. that, the, that, that the subdivisions were to have connectivity. Right. Period. There's a Blair Township policy, which which is you know, demanding. Right. And uh, so, yeah. So this, this is public road. This too. is even more so it's not more public. That, that if right. it was a public road, it was hooking on. We don't have our standards, as we know. But hence why you, my suggestion. But you're throwing the the wrench in there by not because they want a road that's going to start to not meet our standards immediately at that at their line. Uh, I, I don't like Otherwise, I, they build it to our standards and ask us to take it down. I don't like the idea of these 99 year right way. Well, agreements. I, I can't speak no, for their standards because they didn't have that kind of information with this at this early stage. Mm -hmm. um, generally, the uh, developers will, will go through the PUD process because it's cheaper, faster, and, and it's just a whole lot easier for them to go through versus going through. A true subdivision process. Um, so what's always a little bit you have to be a little bit cautious of is when they want to do site condo or PUD and then say, hey, but um, can we make this unicorn and we'll do we'll, we'll make this we'll leave this as a site condo or a PUD, but what we'll have public roads? That unicorn in there is just it's like they're subverting the subdivision process. So, so Wayne, just for clarity, on a subdivision, it's not an issue to put in the county road, right? But you're saying with the PUD or site condo, they don't have to because it's private. Correct. Right. But if we say to them, well, we'll accept the roads, we're gonna, but we're not connecting anything unless we, we have public roads there. So you have to build them up to the county specs for us to take them over and then we'll do it. It doesn't mean that they can't have their homeowners association. They can right. still have that. Yeah, but then the roads are public. Well, they're public yeah. roads. And there, there are some issues with that still. Because the way a PUD is set up is they don't actually have like the physical boundaries and everything quite the same. Steve was explaining it to me and he said, you know, there's differences with the way they are set up as far as how that road is actually established. Whereas within a, within a subdivision, if you vacate that road, it goes to the adjacent property owners. But if a road ever were to say get vacated, it's not something you can you normally do because it's all kind of like this one ambiguous property mm. that is one gigantic property within this PUD, as opposed to a right of way. It's not a true right of way. It's an easement type situation through the uh, through this PUD. So they have a direct connection out to Zimmerman. Mm -hmm. 
I say we get nothing and unless they need it into a Zimmerman farm. and Silver Lake. We'll have to figure that out. They, they can access Silver Lake too, right? Silver Lake or, or, or North Long Lake. Or North Long Lake. Yeah, phase one has their, their senior living, and that is uh, directly off of North Long Lake. Uh, the phase two, their entrance would be off of Zimmerman. Uh, the plan, Garfield Township planning would like to get these connected out to uh, Heritage Estates to the south, uh, as well as over to uh, Eaglehurst, uh, just for that continent, you know, that interconnectivity of communities and, and, and subdivisions, as well as from uh, their their fire uh, fire department who really wants additional access points. Uh, down through there, so yeah. so they asked if we would uh, have this discussion. <laughs> so Eaglehurst is I County Plow. Yes, we yeah. plow that. Eaglehurst. And, and Colonial. And I I, I, call I agree with would that. Would that be within the what? stub road? Yes. The there's, physical confines. What is the stub road now? Is that where this turnaround would be? Where we to go that day? There's not. There's insufficient room to build a a true cul-de-sac within the existing heritage estate subdivision. Okay. So if it, if a true cul-de-sac were to be constructed um, just inside of the TUD, because um, you only, you're only going to wind up going, I think, a couple hundred feet okay. up to the very first cross-section or a, a crossroad, and it's that crossroad, then a couple hundred feet over the zone. So it would, it would eat up a lot of, a lot of area and would look Drop it off <laughs> because of the cold confines of where they're at. Yeah. Well, I, I guess that's what I'm getting at. Here's the the idea that what I thought I was hearing was the idea of, of, of the turnaround or the cul-de-sac was so that we would stay within the area that is now public road, and as long as we stay within those confines, what is now public road, and we don't go into their property, then we're going to have this issue of public private. We would go up there, we would turn around and we would go out. But at that point, the difference there would be is as we're plowing our private road or our public road, it's only there for a turn. That's the only right. thing we're doing. We're just using it. We're to just turn using it to turn around. So even if it is on their property, it's not like we're doing additional plowing. We're just using it. Right. As so, turn we can, we can so we do, can do that. We can do that turnaround without all these other we go right away. Right. Agreement. We have to still have an easement. If, if, we, if we then get this legal agreement to go to the first intersection, it wouldn't be a, a, a turn. Basically, they're going to have to go up there and do a three point turn, you turn and go back. You want to be on the and, and that seems to be even even if we have all the legal entanglements answered, we don't have any liabilities, we're all happy with that. We got a 99 year go. That sounds like a really bad idea to say, you know, <laughs> go up there in our big trucks. And, do a three point turn and come back this 200 feet. I mean, that seems kind of, I mean, that'd be like a Bush Road say, okay, we're gonna turn around and yeah, just kind of yeah. driveway. If, if we were gonna do it, I, I think that sounds really bad long term. Yeah, if we would do it, we would have to go in on the stuff, have to turn around, you know, it's on, so we can get our truck out. And then it's so I, I just picture it. Here's the stuff, County Road. Here's the big pregnant section in the center, and yeah. here's a little teeny narrow road going into subdivision. Okay, so we we protected the, the integrity of our organization and liability and everything. Okay, but what have we accomplished? Uh, the integrity of <laughs> Yeah, that we just what we've accomplished is to open up vehicular traffic from a private subdivision condo, site condo, or PUD to start trafficking through this neighborhood. And I don't think the residents in that neighborhood- Why don't we stop it? Sure we can, we just don't, we don't connect them. Uh, do we have that option? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. it. That's there is nothing that says we have to that's let to a like the road around the direction. See, that's yeah, why I meant. Well, well, the whole thing was set up with the agreements and understandings that that's why it was there. I mean, that was. But, but two out of the road standards. Public road. Public road. Well, public public road. road standards. So I'm saying, what I'm saying is. The one in Blair Township was built that way. Right. And that was the way it's going to be. If you want to come in prior to the stub, then. Yeah, well, yeah, the one, the one in Blair was basically they were going to attach a, a, a public 
road to our public road, right? Right. And then the roads off to the side are going to be private, which right. kind of created a little kinkiness by itself because you say, now, now what if you get an SAD? Oh, they're gonna have right. right. Only these people and those people don't have the right. even though they all drive. Right. It creates, you know, in the future, the possibility. We have spent so many hours undoing bad decisions by former management and former boards. I, I can't even, how many hours? Just lots. just tons. Well, lots of money because we've accepted roads in the past that should never have been accepted. And, right. and, and did these hinky little things like this. And then 20, 30 years from now, nobody here has any knowledge of it, doesn't know, and they look at the paperwork and go, what were they thinking? And, and so I would say, hey, keep it simple. Uh, no, we don't do it at all. Or yeah, we'll do it, except for one thing. They're going to be county roads, they're going to be county maintained, and then we'll hook them up. Or at least the county maintained from that no. point to the county point straight through, the like whole, Captain and Blair, right? Nope, the whole, the whole thing. The whole Did you hear what Bill said? They did the, the main road through, and then it got all weird with the private, because then I'm you set up for the special assessment district. Okay. They yeah. want to come in and they want to fix the road, because this road's nice, but all of their so small only the people who drive out of that road. Uh, you you, you got 10 it. houses on the public road. Yeah. If it was an SAD, would have to pay for the repair of that road. You got 60 houses behind them on private roads that oh. don't have to pay a dime. That's right. And that's their only access. And to it's the set up for, for disaster for the future board, future road commission yeah. uh, management and everything. But Jason's idea, we have, I'm going to say abandoned, I don't know if that's the word to use, but where we turn that whole stub over. So we just keep following straight down that road. And if it, change that plant, that stuff going into that is all private. Well, the conversation on that was, that's a, it's a platted subdivision and you're going to have to go through the plat act to get it. No, and it but, has streamlined quite a bit, but it's still, do, you're talking, they have, no, they'd have to do it. They, they, they would have to file. So, so we just, that would no, have been, no, we, as far as going through the plat to have it amended, that's nothing to do with us. So, so, so that I have a, I mean, I don't, that process, I don't care about that process, and I don't even care if we sell that, that road to them or turn it over to them or whatever. Okay, I don't. That would be the only two options. But I don't want private them. people driving through a public road like that through the other subdivision. That I mean, I'm thinking about the residents. Well, you're road. thinking of the, the cost to repair that road if the SAD has to be done. All those people using that would then be. No, well, that was just one of the people in the subdivision, subdivision right. that it goes through. That would be somebody's problem 20 or 30 years from now. Right. So, but that's who that's going to be creating a problem or a potential. But maybe we don't have to. I, yeah, I, I think that it's. So, no is the answer you're thinking. I, I think there are, I think that no, we're not going to connect this private road to public road, but your options are that you build these up to uh, county specs and make them public roads, fine, mm -hmm. and we'll take them. Well, they have to be bonded to make sure that they do it. But I mean, that's not a big deal. That contract can do it all the time. Then they have another access anyway, right? I mean, two, two yeah. other access. Oh, that are me. So I'm well, already discussing that? this, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm on board with what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. It's just, Gar the reason we're discussing it was because Garfield Township wanted interconnectivity. And we agree. We like that too. Right? Yeah, but it's got to be done properly. Fire department likes it. Everybody, everybody likes it. Because yeah. they're trying to cut the corner of doing a subdivision because it's quicker, easier, and faster than the, the, the other the PUD. And, and they can build smaller roads so they can get bigger for pieces of the property to build houses by. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to skirt the yeah. way it should be done. I, I, I don't even know how many people in the last nine years have been in here going, Please take over my subdivision. You can. No, because they don't meet our standards. And, and then they can't build them. They can't afford it. The people living there can't afford it. Sure, we'll send over where you got to spend the money now. The time to do it is no, when, it's 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 when it's being started. Yeah. When it's being started and being developed. And that's not what a lot of them, all contractors want to do. So if they, they if they had no other access to their landlock, then we may have to talk about it. So are you wanting some direction to go back to college? <laughs> or do you want to know? Please, just, I don't want to do this. 
He right. wants direction because he's been dealing. Well, with ba basically, I, 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 I'm thinking what I'm hearing here from everybody is if it's not up to our standards, then don't connect all the roads in that yeah. PUD. I, I, well, I, we I think we would say that, that we're, 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 we're not in agreement that we would want to enter into any long term 99 year agreements to try to mitigate our liabilities and stuff to, right. be able to, to do their stuff. We're disinclined to do that. Right. Um, is what we are inclined to do is, is either get rid of the stub and turn it private by whatever means they would have to go through to do it so that we wouldn't be involved anymore or for, for build the darn thing to public standards and make them all make a, make it all public. Is that where we're at? I'm not into the second one. I don't want to turn it. I don't want to, I don't want to have them come after us for that road to stop and take it from public to private. Well, no, no, they make it all public. They're all private. Well, it's either take our little stub, right. take the little stub yeah. and turn it private and tie into your private. I don't have as much of a problem with that because it, or, or everything's got to be public. Right. And as far as SADs go, I mean, it would be the entire association, it seems to me, if, if there was an SAD. Oh, yeah, it would be one piece of property. Right? Because it would be seen as one piece of property and that they'd have to do something in that way. But again, I, I get to what you're talking about, bad decisions in the past leaving some messes to clean up later on. Uh, I think preferably um, yeah. they take their connections from elsewhere and they, they basically stay out of that particular uh, subdivision that, that exists already. Or, or they can, if they want it, they can have it. Or they let them have it. Just but, have, yeah. We let them have the stuff, but then you're still driving through the subdivision. So you're still connecting yeah, the private to the but public. That's not our decision to make. That's the zoning and township decision of what they want to interconnectivity of their subdivisions. Or, People from one subdivision driving through another that's subdivision. That, that's their issue, not ours. Uh, yeah, well, it's really, it really is hard to, to regulate that. It is. I it see is. where Mark's coming from. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm, well, I mean, we can stop them from doing it, but should we? I mean, that's right. It's that's like zoning. Absolutely. Issue. That's the question. That's absolutely. zoning issue. I don't within our realm. Um, you, you know, if if we let people that are in the back line that are in private subdivision or concentrated housing, okay? Start driving the vehicular traffic through other arteries of public subdivision, or it's gonna deteriorate quicker. And they have absolutely no, if they're a private association, they're not part of that subdivision up front. The people in the subdivision up front are gonna pay for it, not for the people up back. But clearly, no, still using clearly the township is looking for the interconnectivity and it's going to happen one way or the other. If we make it into a public roadway, they're still going to have people passing through. And, but, and if you're talking, if you're talking, we get paid to be seen. Right? You're active, if you want my, but yeah, we're going to start to coming, yeah. And their roads are bigger and they're, and we need to see. That's, that's, the, that's the continuity there. I, I, I make a guess that probably they don't want to build. Big white public roads now. No, they probably don't. Therefore, then their option is it's not. I know they don't. Go for the same fitness and standard and base. And yeah, geez, I wonder why. Go look at some of the roads out in the Greenland Township that aren't uh, <laughs> up to standard. You know, I'll find them now that it's green. I mean, the ones look like they're in water. Okay, let's yeah. put this right, in right. Let's <laughs> put this <laughs> one back. So, does Wayne have any idea what we're telling him to do yet? Tell me down. I, I, I understand one one option that is to build it to public road standards and make it a subdivision. Apply it to subdivision. Apply it to subdivision. In which case you take it out of our hands because if it's that point standards it's and apply it to subdivision, we have no option. Then that's fine because then everybody can. And everybody yeah, but then again, that's their, that would be their decision to make. Absolutely. The other is that no, we're not going to let you. Right. Right. That's, then that's that's okay. No. Unless unless you do the first one. If right. you do that, we have no option. Wait, wait, right. what's second, what's the first one is, the first one is, is to make it do a plan. Oh yeah. Well, we, we have, have no option. Well, right. we don't care because right. then it'll get to stand. Correct. Right. So that's option one yeah. form. Option two is if they choose not to do option one, then you don't tie in. Right. Then we got a little stub road just are we on are we on option? Where, where are we as a board? I know you're very vocal. Well, I'm, I'm with one, three, I'm with two. Which would be releasing the private or the yeah. public to private. 
I'm not opposed to, I'm not cheering for that one. That third option happen. is real iffy for me. I don't care about the, them wanting to take that road over and all that stuff. My concern is the same. Philosophically, it's the same because I don't want concentrated traffic coming oh. out of the back. So, and if, if we sell it to them, oh, fair, we give it to them. Give it to them. We just turn it over and fine. Well, then what do they do? Well, now they got a chunk of road that does is isn't in their TUD, but now they're going to say, well, but we want to connect at the intersection. And I think what I'm hearing from Bill is that's okay. We don't have to worry about the stuff. Now we just plow, we go through, and it's no big deal, right? And but I, and well, I, I agree with that. Through. I agree with that assessment. I do. The caveat is you still got all that ridiculous traffic shooting through the subdivision. I mean, you know. If you're in Canada, Assuming yeah. that they don't open up any of the other access. Yeah, they're going to have two other access points. And so the old folks home is probably not. And, 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 and yeah. yeah. Mark's, Mark's opposed. Where are you at, Dan? That's the, the public over to private. I, I suggested it to begin with because I thought that that would be a way to do it. And I had and I, and I, and not thought of his particular perspective. However, they would still have to go through the process of basically dealing with the subdivision people who were platted already right and yeah. frankly some of them might have that very same objection and they're going to have to fight that battle with them but, but then we're, then we're not ready but then we're not <laughs> I mean, no exactly I mean, we're out of it at that point again right. because yeah, maybe, maybe the neighbors will play nice together and they'll go maybe, through, maybe, maybe so. they won't it won't and we're not the ones that mediated so I'm sitting in my house and I'm the last one in the intersection by the stub road. <laughs> and I'm happy as a clam. Right now. Knowing, <laughs> knowing right now. But knowing that someday that stub could get punched through to another subdivision. I and, make going, okay. and then I hear it's happening. And I go, okay, and then I find out because I talked to my lawyer buddy over a cocktail and says, hey, public to public. No problem. You do that when you go in. A public private? Right, because you can't use what? that to pass through technically. Yeah. Right. Tell you what, right. let's file an injunction and sue those back. Telling you, that's, I mean, it's that's one. But then it's not that bad up, right? No, no, no. We, when we, we are, if in the process of turning it over, we're going to have right. somebody come along yeah. and, right, with that's, that's, three, it's, it's, part, it's potentially it would be a party to gross, I'm sure. But once it is done, and nobody got in the, involved in the process, and it's that's your sale. So clear as you want. Yeah, I think he's got it. Okay. Okay. You <laughs> we'll get the direction. You, you, uh, you, you can talk to him some more. So Wayne, just don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, uh, Wayne, we'll let you borrow, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mo moving right along. Uh, <laughs> For now, Wayne to be an Aussie. <laughs> East West Corridor, phase 2A. Okay. Yes. Um, so after after the last meeting, um, we asked if there was you know any specifics we could get into in there or out there. Uh, we didn't have any, but there were some questions that were certainly raised. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I, I was able to answer those. Why do you keep wanting um, to be going like this? <laughs> Can I give you three guests? Yeah. Well, well okay. uh, one of the questions was um, uh, the, one of their songs, WSP. Uh, it is it originated as a as a Canadian company, but there is also a WSP American, and the um, office that we would be working with that uh, OHM is working with is WSP American offices down in Southeast Michigan. So, so good point. Um, I wanted to make sure we clarified that for you because I did not have that answer. Okay. Um, another question was the information that is generated out of these reports um, confirmed that all the information that was derived out of phase one was turned over to us at the end of, of phase one. So all that information is given to us. And that's our and, and that's however we want. Correct. That is our information. Correct. On that there. So, um, one of the comments on uh, the 
uh, website of uh, where that information is hosted. Um, it was hosted on one of their websites with full access, uh, you know, by us for ease of convenience. Um, our current website at the Road Commission is actually hosted through the county mm -hmm. and having, trying to work through that in order for the consultant to do those updates to all mm -hmm. of that and just this probably layer an extra layer of, yeah. of, of that. And so it, it was out there. Now at, at any given time, we could, you know, purchase uh, 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 server storage space and, and have all that information you know, how here, and you know, I'm sure we will at the end of, of all the phases, but as of right now, it's just that over there, we have a nice big link right off of our, our web page. Uh, so people go to go to our web page, it's right there, they click on it, they don't even realize that they, they go over and here's all the information over there. So at some point, that'll be able to come over to our servers? We'd be able to get all that over here. in here. Yep, put it okay. either on our server or host a, a virtual web. So they're hosting it. Do we host to it? Do we do that? Do we manage that as an administrator? We do all of this information kind of going through the through the tell process. So this is going same thing through that process. We're not driving the ship. We're 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 paying for the fuel for the ship, but we're not driving the ship. The health process drives the ship, and so they're doing they're doing that work. And so as that information comes, then it gets fed into there. And at the at the end, then we get it at the end. Then we get it. At the well, end. but you, you're following me, and you mm -hmm. who is who is the administrator for that website? Do we post that information? They they they, they administrate. They were doing the administration. So they post it, and they administrate it, and they post it. And we have no control on what's posted on that website. Well, they ask us what we want and how we want it to form it. There we go. So, and then so they take it after we've reviewed what they're posting. There you go. So we do control it. Yeah, and we do a third one. Well, well, this is the that's why I'm getting really granular, okay? Because I don't believe the first phase that we had our eyes on it first. Maybe no, I know we didn't. And they were posting stuff up there that it's 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 legitimate information, it's coming out of the Pell process. I get it, we get it, but we would at least like to have a set of eyes on it from our team, you guys, to make sure that it reflects properly on our behalf. And I'm not saying to to influence anybody. I just want to make sure that well, it's accurate information, that it yeah, it, 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 well at, at, right? at, at the very least, at the very least, we yeah. have uh, we are prepared to deal with whatever might be the the waterfall of fun that comes afterwards. Right. We um, have a heads up. Yes. Right. And 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 that did occur even with the first phase one. It, it it came in through staff. We reviewed. We said, "Yep, okay, go ahead and do that." The we were not clear in getting all that information to you as a board at that process. So we as an organization had it. The organization um, didn't send it to, through to the board is what, yeah. what we were working with them on it. Right. So the step was before working anything was up. And but that was the stuff, you well, know, and that was like, it would happen, we'd have the meeting. Yep. And then they'd post the summary of the meeting after they'd say, hey, or, do you see anything? You know, that sales was happening that you want covered in the summary of the meeting, and then they post the summary of the meeting. Well, I'll cut to the chief. I, I felt, and I still do, that they posted things that weren't factual, but more of an opinion. And what we require here are facts, not an opinion. I know people are very, uh, generally speaking, people are cautious because they're like, 
Well, you know, uh, Wayne, to your point, you know, you, you would say, you know, we're going through the Pell process, the Pell is driving it, and, and we get it, get it, okay? But on the other hand, you know, that there was, a, and it's not you, but there's a general consensus out there that they don't want five people on this board with our management team trying to direct or drive the decision and the outcome. Well, I feel the same way about OHM because I believe they are. And I will go to my grave and I will always feel the OHM has taken liberties with some of that information. I watched it, I listened to it, I, I saw the meetings and I saw what the outcome. And I think they painted a picture in some instances that was different because they wanted to drive the process. It, it's a tool that's used by facilitators. Um, yep. it, it, it's, it's Delphi, uh, it's a Delphi technique. You basically, you, you it's, it's part of the Delphi technique. And they will get the outcomes that they desire based on how they, how they frame the uh, meetings and, and the interaction with the public. And uh, while we could certainly do the same thing if we had the, the Delphi masters working for us, um, it, that's not how we operate. And there, were, there, were, there was evidence of it. There was certainly uh, influenced, uh, influenced participation through the process. And, and I don't know why or, or where, where it started from, but there was certainly that. And uh, I get, I, I have the same sense that Mark came in, in, in it. Um, there were things that popped up. It's like, where did that come from? You know, some of the options that they yeah. came up. Where did that come from? That was nothing we never, that, that we were even discussing. And they were wasting our time and money, even bringing it to the public for their consideration. Where did that come from? So, you know, I mean, yeah, they're experts and they're engineers and they've been in the, but they're experts and they're engineers and they've been in the industry for a long time and there are way things are done. Well, sometimes the way things are done, we need to look beyond the way things have always been done. And we need to look at the way things should be done. And I think, I think they're watch, we're, we're being watchdog of the board and we have to be careful not to put in undue influence. I, I get that. But I think we got to watchdog them too. Make sure that they don't. Because I think they're, they get a very narrow scope because it's, you know, it's, you know, they know what buttons and boxes they have to fill to get the Pell Grant process done. And my, and I don't go long about it, but I, and, and so that's why I want to make sure that in terms of communications that our staff is, is fully informed on what is going out to be published or, or printed or anything, and that we as a body are also informed so that we're not, like Jason said, caught off guard, okay? Because I can remember distinctly two meetings where we raised holy heck in here and we called OHM on the carpet because they were in the paper saying things that we had no idea about, okay? I'm not saying that they wouldn't say those things. But why do we as board members have to hear it through the newspaper? That happened early in my time here, and that ended up with heads rolling and terminations. So we don't want to be there. We don't want to be there. And it's not on you guys. It's just we need to know before the media does and before the general public does, because that's what this board is supposed to be deliberating on. So that's, that's it. That's why I want to know if they're hosting that website, if they're administrating it, and, and, and they're publishing it and putting it up there. And if you guys are comfortable with it, then it's on you. And you've already talked to us. I'm good with that on the website, okay? But still not good with our website. <laughs> it's okay. Everybody needs to have it. You have something else? So, no, you know, I, I there, there were things that it seems like we were the last to know, and I thought we should be the first to know. Um, I guess I'm just maybe a little more easy going than some of us here. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to go through it again, though. No, I, I, I think the, the, the essence of it needs to be is, is that 
you know, the, you know, is, is the dog wagging the tail or the tail wagging the dog or whatever. I yeah. won't differentiate which one we are or we fit between those two. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> you can draw your own. <laughs> All that's um, well, yeah, I, I think you need to be very sensitive about what, when the raw data comes in and the information and the supposition and the opinions that, that they then be formulated and, and the, that, it, that it come through in a certain, there's certain protocols. That I, I think you're you you have a different take on it because of your experience before I was in the board. I didn't experience the, the media's attacks and stuff happening. So I hear from staff and I've heard from the you know how the cell process was supposed to work. So I was expecting to be the last one to hear. So because it wasn't us awesome. why are you guys we haven't decided anything yet. We're hearing from our consultants what their recommendations are. And they haven't even made the recommendations to us. They're talking about suggested or what they may suggest, and they wanted one more public input before they made the recommendations to us. Is how I took that, that to go. Because I didn't go through what you guys did with the, the information coming to the media first before you guys heard it, or before the board heard it. Yeah. And I would be, I would feel much differently had I been on the board. So, but I want to ask you a question, Ian. Mm -hmm. Based on what you said, your understanding is that you as a board member would be the last to know before the general public knows through a media outlet. Correct. With the way the Pell process works. Because the Pell process. Well, well, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that really how the Pell process is supposed to work? That is so, my understanding. I may well, be wrong. It's well, happened once or twice. We'll find out about that. If that's, if that's true, because I don't think the Pell process, Andy, is supposed to be exclusive of us as a governing body. I, don't I mean, I had heard all these thing. suggestions. I've been to a lot of these meetings. I, I wasn't caught off guard because I had been at some of those. You were at some. I, yeah. I know Jason was with some. Carol was with a lot of stuff. Well, they actually asked us not to come to a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Which, because we didn't want to, they didn't want us to yeah, go we started coming early, early and then they're kind of like, well, maybe you don't have to show up so long. But I mean, if that's your understanding of the process, then I can understand why you would feel that. But I think we need clarity because that's not my understanding of the process. My understanding is that we're intricately involved in the process all the way through. We're just not the decision makers. And, and we're not supposed to provide undue influence um, in the public forums and in opinions, and, and, and we're not supposed to be forging people's ideas, but we're supposed to be listening, observing, and taking this information in. And 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 uh, the consultants should be coming to us saying, "Hey, here's what we what we're learning. Here's here's the reports. Here's the information. Here's the feedback." We should be getting that firsthand. I thought. Yeah. The, the problem know, that I the problem that I had. It, with the way that that worked out is when they came out and they started talking to the press as if they were the road commission speaking yeah. on our behalf based on what, what the public was giving them. And we're kind of like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that was the... I, I don't think that's what they said. I think that's what was reported. Either way. They shouldn't have been there. Then they, they should, if, if, yeah. if they're as good as they claim for the hundreds of thousands of dollars they're taking from us, I would think that they would understand how to handle that. I, I think I think they said our suggestions are going to might be or options could be. And then it was the social media that spawned into this is what the road commission is going to do. I don't think the media. I, I it, it's been a little while, so I don't remember exactly where what the articles were. But I don't think the articles were the road commission is going to put 37 roundabouts on South Airport. No, well. I see, I was right. It wasn't 37. Right. <laughs> That's a Jason point. They, they didn't, they, in fact, it, it came across very clearly that this is what we were going to be doing because this is what the public said. It was considered low hanging fruit or something. Yeah. You know, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and also, the first time that I got a full understanding was uh, that there were, there were phases. In other words, short-term projects we're going to we're going to recommend all these and they're going to do them and then the long-term project could be 30 years from now who authorized them to make those statements that's what i want to know 
that's strategy. That's that's us. That's our job. But back to your was was my interpretation of how the thought process worked correct? Somewhat correct or am I way off? That's my general understanding of the FL process is that while while we're involved, meetings, attending the meetings, listening, and staff, we were getting the preliminary reports before anything was, was put out there. They would then have these meetings, then do the final, the final presentations to the stakeholders, to the public then get that last information all together and then present that last report to, to the board. Okay, so then I agree with that, Lee. There was one sliver between the board and the final preparation that went to the media first or second. That's what happened. I might just clarify that I don't believe that they went to the press press was very involved all the way through the process and were very, um, they're very active. And so we would get lots of inquiries, uh, staff, uh, uh, um, you know, OHM. On that case. I didn't read anything in terms of a quote that I was had any issue from a staff member. I didn't have any issue with Anybody except for Matt Wendley and his direct statements. Because he was absolutely speaking as if he was speaking on behalf of the health commission. And that is the misinterpretation. And, and frankly, you know, I don't want to go on. It just can't happen in the future. That can't happen for this board in the future. Any board, no matter who's sitting here, it just, just can't happen. That, that, that they, they just need to, you know, Matt was willing to uh, talk to the media on the phone and give him quotes, but not, not, we did not hear from him here prior to that. And that's, that's not right. So, all right. Well said. We may not have been done. We kind of stopped. We're afraid to talk anymore right now. No, I just, you know, did this homework. If, if there's if there's any other questions uh, um, from you know from the last presentation though uh, I want to make sure that I uh, I'm answering your questions um, on this. Those were the those are the main main questions that kind of came out of it, including the process there. But I think we yeah, nobody questions. none of you guys sent us anything since then that we're aware of. So the question I, the the one question I have is this last. Meeting in the 20s or whatever. Um, uh, that that was directing. We we made a motion and it passed to um, have you guys negotiate the the final terms with OHM before signing the agreement. And where are we at on that? Well, again, we you know if there was anything that was previously you know, in here and indicated if there's issues with that, that's what we were seeking to to be able to address. Uh, we didn't get any there. So, I mean, I don't have anything within here to go forward with to additionally, uh, I guess, negotiate any changes. Right. Um, staff, we've uh, we've reviewed through this. We, we've looked at this. Um, if I think we're comfortable with the with the with the, with the number of meetings. Um, understanding that based on stakeholders, based on others, that we may be able to trim off a couple of meetings. But if we run into hot spots, if we run into contentious uh, issues, we want to we want to be able to be um, you know get that consensus with with those groups that it may generate another meeting somewhere else. Um, so those kinds of have a, 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 we have to have uh, a. a, a Contract presented to right. the board so that approved. we can uh, so we can approve the right. contract and, and the manager and the director manager to, to execute it. Right. And we are we are basically, you know, that was last week. So we gave you guys the week to kind of think it through and make sure we were all good. 
and there were no other questions that came in that we needed to answer. And assuming we don't have any more questions, then we will begin negotiation more thoroughly to get everything straightened out the way it needs to be for the entire process. I, I think, though, based on this based on this discussion, I think it'd be prudent to approach this with a uh, with a clear understanding of who is the road commission and who is away chum or you know i mean the process the, the the part of the process that they play and to make sure that they understand uh what they may say about their their particular part of the process but what we have to say might have a different perspective so are you saying are you that it, when they're talking to the media it, when they're talking to the media they're it's not asked ohm as you know, but it's not it's not necessarily as anything is definitive or decided by the road commission based on on their actions, unless we express expressly authorized such a statement. So it needs to be clear that they're making recommendations for the board to make decisions. They're not making the decisions. This is not the way it's going to be. You know, Andy, I think that's really clear. Yeah. I think that's really clear because the one thing it really came, and I think everybody would have to agree with us. I don't know. But but they come out and said, there's the, you know, we're, we're recommending the short term things and, and the long range thing. And they put a crossing as something that's 20, maybe 30, 40 years in the future. That's our decision, not their decision. I, I, I don't remember them saying that specifically. Oh, what okay. I said, what yeah. I believe what they said was, depending on what the availability of funding and the necessary decisions that would be made that it could still be something that could fall within the scope they of 30 the years. They said a whole bunch of different projects. But the, yeah, because they said that, you know, the, the low hanging fruit, yeah. I mean, there weren't many of the, what you call the low hanging fruit. I think they may have even said those exact words was like the signal timing and the roundabout. adding of this lane. The roundabouts were their medium term yeah. solutions, which they were saying were in the five to 10 years to get them complete. Mm -hmm. And then to complete a bridge, if there was a bridge that was decided that was going to be built, could be 10 years, could be 20, could be 30 years out, depending on what the commitment of the board was. And that's what I know when Matt talked to us, he said, you know, we're putting this in here, but it is not something that we are saying that you're going to get done in 10 years. He said, this is something that you guys have to decide what your priority is. And when you get further modeling done of what's happening with the roundabouts, then that's going to help further determine what the time frame is to get the, a, a crossing built. Fair enough, Brad. So that conversation should have happened with us. And it should have been in years. It should have been in phases. That this is the phase one, phase two, phase three. They could have verbally told us what they thought in terms of the time frame and how one has to be done uh, before the other or needs to be done concurrently. I mean, strategy. strategy. Right. And, and, and what we didn't, that didn't happen. Those, 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 those dates of years went into the media before we even knew what was going on. And that when people ask and me, I don't know about other people, but so we do another study, <laughs> another study, and it's way out. One guy's like, I'll be dead by the time you guys get it done. I mean, yeah. so I mean, that's, that's kind of what. That's, that's, well, that's, yeah, and you're always going to have people that are saying, why are you doing another study? These are federally required studies that have to be done if we ever do need the federal to well, 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 do you want to get into that for a second? Why don't you go ahead and get into that for a second? Because I think that's. Well, I mean, I mean, we, we really have to look at how important something is to us. And frankly, um, we, can, we can waste four or five years of our time doing studies so that we can get our 80% uh, our more than what, we, what we're going to have. I mean, you know, we might have $20 million in local funds invested into a $100 million project. However, who says it has to be a $100 million project? Did we build a, a $6 million bridge? I mean, honestly, I mean, and, and then, and then, you know, as far as the environmental, as far as the environmental impact, sure, we have to deal with that. But guess what? Road commissions have built 
through sensitive areas before and can do so responsibly. Um, if it doesn't require, or if we could do it without the federal money and, and still invest about the same amount as we're going to do to get to all those big environmental, you know, uh, hell approved federal dollars in the end anyway, why are we spinning our wheels going through this process? And, and I, I guess, you know, it's, it's, this is the, this is the little part of me that just gets a little irritated in the background. It's like, we're really, really doing a lot of wheel spinning to appease a process. And could we not literally hire an engineer that, to assist you who could simply work on developing the crossing? And what would it cost us? And to, to find out, you know, what would it cost us? Would it cost us 10 million? Would it cost us 20 million to get a connection from here to there? A to B, wherever A and B is, okay, what, what is it going to cost us? You know, we, we, we talk about this, this whole environmental, uh, the, the, Pell, the Pell process, and, and we keep throwing this great big number of $100 million out there. Why does it have to be $100 million? I mean, I, 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 I don't know that it has to be. I, you know, I, I've often asked, what does it cost to build this? And it, 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 if, if we just said, okay, we're the boss. We get to do what we want to do. What would it cost us to build this? And then work our way back from there to make it work so that A, it's environmentally sen you know, sensible, okay? B, it solves a traffic issue that, you know, <coughs> driving around a river, okay? I mean, it, it creates uh, a, a medium for the future, okay? I mean, th these, are, these are things we want to do. But let's, let's take a look at what do we want and work our way back, back from it. I mean, that, that's to me, that's, that's, that's a question. That's a question. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, well, okay. It's, it's, yeah, I don't think there is. But, but, but I see, the thing is the Pell process, we, we do this, this song and dance, this whole Pell process, and it's, it's, it's all wonderful. And, and, and but, but then the question keeps getting asked, what do we want? What do we want in the Pell process? I can tell you what we want. <laughs> we want a damn bridge across the river. Okay, that's what we want. Now let's find out how to make that happen. We're going to spend three or four million dollars by the time this is all said and done, getting getting permission to borrow to get extra money from the federal government. What if we didn't take the money from the federal government? You'd still have to do all a lot of this well, because you have to. You nobody's going to permit you to just put in a bridge. Oh no 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 no! You're still going to have to do ninety percent of this environmental research. Okay, and. Through an engineering firm. Yeah, and it's going to cost you about the same amount as what we're going to spend to get this done. And in the long run, when you're talking probably, I'm guessing this is a $60 million cross. In all reality, you're talking probably $60 million to get from here to there. Right. And to when you start talking about those, especially when we move into an MPO, you know, there's more, it's, it, it, we could get earmarked funds too, to the point where, you know, we're not going to have even a 10% match potentially. We could be dropping down to like a 5% match if, if we get the people in there. Metropolitan, yeah, yeah, yeah. metropolitan, metropolitan planning yeah. area. Yeah. It, 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 it basically, we're, we're, we're very close to it. It depends on what happens with the size yeah. yeah. And we, we will. Yeah. Okay. So, so what, so what you're saying, Brad, is that that you know I'm taking for face value man, that you're saying that the expenditure we have right now going through this this uh, Pell process is going to be similar if we didn't use the Pell process and we went through it for environmental impact and all the land use studies and everything else we have to do. Still going to cost you a lot. Still cost a lot. But this opens up the door for the federal funding and that's why it's worth it to do it. Is that you what I agree? That 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 is that what I want to dance? Yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's, I guess that brings it brings it back home. If the question is um, whether or not we've done an environmental impact, it, will an environmental impact study and approvals by the federal government be enough? 
Will it or not? Or for, for a bridge. In other, see, the thing is, we keep asking the question what we want. We know what we want. And that's, that's what I'm really trying to get to, too, is because we're well, making public you know, now said that's what they want. The, the public has it. In fact, that's the other thing. The last, the, the last uh, part of this process, the phase one that we went through, they said what we want. Why are we asking that question again? I don't know that we are. We're, we're not really asking the question. We're asking what is the best route <laughs> okay, now okay, so to, okay, meet, okay, to meet the environmental impacts, to reduce okay. the environmental okay. impacts to the lowest but, level. But how does that mm -hmm. involve, I mean, honestly, truthfully, and, and, and maybe it's just, this is, you know, Ray, I'm asking the wrong person. Why does that involve every Tom, Dick, and Harry and, and the public who, who really has no idea what's in that path? I mean, how does how do those things influence us? I, I, I'm curious. How does that influence influence the process? Well, um, part of the process is dealing with social economic impacts. All right, and we're in a vacuum here. Don't explode. We are limited as to how much social economic impacts that we can perceive with with this limited number. And so that's why you, you then have these focus groups and you know, stakeholder groups, the special interest groups mm -hmm. on that. As, and that is because then you're getting more of that. I mean, that's that's what the exact one of the right. you know. There's the, the we have the five potential solutions or, or options that came out of it. So these things are then looked at. Each of those are looked at with each of these, you know, environmentals and and the social and economic impacts. And it's whittled down to is in essence which is the less harmful, which has the less the, the overall the less type of impact to the public, to the environment, to Every everyone and everything that's involved um, on this, and yeah, we can do it. Just is that tell you what? I'll make it easy. I'll make the choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah. that's not no. what. I, well, I, mean, I just, I just, I, I just find it interesting because where we are proposing to run anything through, okay, I mean, you know, uh, it's very limited in terms of. Uh, Population density, you know, it's it's it, in terms of affecting anybody in particular directly, unless we run it straight up uh, a Hartman Road, which there is a large uh, community of, of people up there who, who would probably be interested in knowing if that were the way we are going. Um, well, last one actually didn't go through all the way to the went south of there, went up. Connected right, and we went up yes. and, okay. and connected that pine and uh, uh, silver pines. Pine. Yeah. So, yeah. and that basically, I mean, who? Why are we not talking to the bison? <laughs> well, I, I mean, honestly, because that's that's what really, may be out there. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I guess I, it just it, it wow. just it seems to me that we're tasked. You're tasked. We're all in this room tasked with finding. The best solutions for our transportation needs. No argument there. Um, and there are there are certainly people who have an interest of how they get to work. You know, the, the how long it takes for an emergency vehicle to get to their house. Mm -hmm. And and truthfully, opening up another another road opens up and takes away nothing. And so we have to go through this process because of the environmental impact. But why aren't we just looking at the environmental impact? And why aren't we just doing a study? And, and, and maybe I'm asking the wrong person because maybe this is a question to ask whoever the federal regulators are who did who, who, who set this 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 bar, you know, to get over. Um, I think these guys are stuck between a rock and oh, I, listen, with uh, us because you guys you, understand what it takes to get to, to that. We, I admire your unlimited questions. patience with, with all the garbage that we, we give you, honestly. I, I, I truly do. But from a I've only seen veins twice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Wayne, I got a question. We, and I can tell you, and, 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 and Joe can, can certainly support it because. Poor Joe is hiding in the bag. I've put a, a lot of this over onto Joe, kind of bringing him up. 
what we go through on just a regular I mean, project yeah, yeah, yeah. is unbelievable. We're facing issues out here that right now that we can't explain. It's like we're not even touching those two culverts. They want to do a hydraulic analysis on two culverts that we're not even touching, but because we're crushing and shaping and lifting the profile of the road over four inches. Right. So, yeah. so we're we're chasing we're those things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, but we we deal with we deal with environmental. We deal with FAA. We deal with social. You know, I mean, we have to deal with mobile. Uh, you know, mobility wise, are we how long? How much are we delaying the public if we're going to do a detour? So it's. Tremendous the amount. I mean, we don't even have any hibernaculars. That's a little yeah. fact to you, if you will. But we have one dead tree, big dead tree that that might take vacation there on the weekend. I don't know. So <laughs> there's there's I all these different that, things that yeah. we we yeah, yeah, yeah that like we're, little, we're I, yeah, them up. I guess the I guess the last thing I would ask um, on this subject is that so we get through the process and we go through. 2A, 2B, then there's supposed to be a three and a four. Uh, I was thinking there was a total of five. Five? I, I think we combined two into 2A two and 2B. Okay, I think that we need a primer on what those are again, not now, mm -hmm. but very shortly. A primer on what those, okay? And then we get to the end of the road process here and Ultimately, there's three recommendations for crossing the river at three different locations in three different particular manners, okay? And it comes down to A, B, C, and there's economic, and there's social economic, and there's environmental impacts and all these things. And we, at that point, they give us their professional opinion, and then they step back, right? And then we, deliberate on if we want to do any one of the three or none. And that's exactly why we requested that this phase two be broken into 2A and 2B. 2A takes those, those different alternatives, those options, brings them on down, basically kind of gives a ranking. Here's the, here's the recommended one, but they're there. To be after, after one of them is selected, if it's not the do nothing option, yeah. if we then have one to look at, that's when we then go to to be where then the estimating starts. We don't want to be looking at three different options and give an you know right. estimate so just, it, 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 for a lot of extra cost. work yeah, and right, running right, on right, costs on right. three different options. No, we need to go through this. We then come up. They come up with. A recommendation. Here, here's the best. Here's the second best. Here's the third best. So we may look at that. And that is option three. Is not going to happen. But we don't want, to want engineering costs on it. Well, we're not going to get engineering. We're hopefully only going to get engineering. Um, we're we're not not engineering. I'm sorry. So it's yeah. Summary recommendation. Yeah. After the recommendation is presented to you at the end of two A, and then you deliberate and you decide what the next step is. If it's a do nothing or if there's one of the options, then we would maybe then proceed to, to B. Well, my takeaway from this is one, communication with this board is critical. We don't want to influence their their opinion, their professional opinions, but by golly, we need to know as a board all this upfront what's going on and not read it in the paper first. I think that can be conveyed to them. We told them twice already. They got it maybe the second time, but then they didn't do it after that. But then the process was almost done. That would be the first takeaway. Second off, get us a primer. I think it'd be helpful to understand these phases. And, and then what I think you guys and our group need to be a little tighter on this going forward. More communication. Even if it's little, little sound bites, get our attention. Make sure we understand. Well, we'll be moving forward for negotiation. And the next phase after to be, I think, is the design. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's construction. It's a testing. Yeah. All right. So you're looking at, you know, your next two phases after this. I mean, when we finish to be, we could be four years out before the funds actually come to us, you know, because we're going to have to start 
getting into that federal aid situation, we're going to have to start putting, you know, bugs in people's ears. Hey, we've got a real big need here. We've done this. We've done that. We need some earmarked money for this project. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of thing that we're going to have to start when we get a decision. I, I think you, heard us, Mark. I, yeah, I, yeah. you guys have certainly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we can, yeah. and that's fine. You know, we, yeah. get, we deal with the environmental yeah. requirements and all the other right. regulatory requirements every day. You don't. I, I think it's important right. when you're giving us assignments that you remember that this isn't our, our lingo that we use every day. You talk about the Pell process, you dealt with it for a while. This is my first time through the Pell process. I don't know about anyone else. Oh, no. This first time I've been through the Pell so, process. What you expect and what we expect are probably not the same. So we need to know when you, when Mark talked about a primer, not the cliff note version, but a little deeper, but not the whole damn encyclopedia. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Or is good? Just thoroughly be okay. <laughs> He's still standing though. We okay. Have one no, more. We're, <laughs> a, a, a is A is uh, um, seven A retirement system annual report oh, form. That's good. That where we're at. Yeah, so part of uh, PA tool uh, 2017 just requires us to report on your pension and OPEB status to the state annually. And part of that is we have to post this on our website and be electronically submitted to the board, which is in the packet. So we 94% funded. 94% funded. Uh, Wonderful. And that's, and that's probably gone down a little bit because I think we were yeah. we, in the audit. It's the, um, the actuarial study did, didn't come out until after the audit was published. So they just rolled forward the 2018. And in that study, it shows us a little bit lower because they took a little more conservative approach on the investment rate of return. MERS dropped it from 7.75% to 7.35%. So we just, it shows that, you know, to cover those liabilities, we'll have to make it up a little bit. But we're in, we're in great position. Did you yeah. read the ticker this morning? I did. About the county? We'll just wait to see what they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, but, yeah. but we're in, we're in pretty we're good shape. It looks like we're within, what, 600,000 about being 100%. Yeah. 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 And so, I think our, our we uh, required contribution for next year will be about 122,000, I think is what it is. Right in that ball. Yeah. So, so, Phil, to make this thing affordable. Not, I'm, I'm not saying we would, but I mean, to make it portable, they're saying 120% is what he said in here the last time we had the guy from the Toronto County that sat for them. Yeah. Uh, for MERS. For yeah, he told us 120% we had to be funded before we can take it anymore. Now I'm hearing you can take it anytime you want. Yes, I don't think that was true. Oh, we were. We were well, that's, that number did come out. That you had to be overfunded. Yeah, be we have about eight million invested in MERS yeah. with our current retirees. We have like four more that's not in retiree status yet. They're either active or deferred. So, well, I think that's something we should discuss in the future. Not that we're going to do anything. We're, we might not. Yeah, we just got some wild tax. Yeah, but now we're we're in there. Well, but well, we're a group. We're almost one hundred percent. So. Yeah, are they point. with the best yeah. group? I mean, yeah. I don't know. So we'll get it as of March 31st. But yeah. Things are coming back. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, B. Looks like Brad's got something in hand for us. Yeah. Yes, this just came in. Hot off so, the press. This is literally hot off the press. Update to add remote participation in voting for board members. Yes. So um, this is just the first three pages of the um, board rules. Essentially, she starts making changes on page two. And um, it's not much that needs to be added. I have not had a chance to completely really digest this myself because it literally just came in yesterday. And I was kind of looking at it and then I got pulled. But, uh, it basically says the same thing we were doing now. You have to be able to be visible. So when you're in a meeting, you would have to be, the technology we use would have to be able to show you so that the members of the public 
would feel like they have a way to deal with you. Um, and there's also um, the, what she recommends, uh, she put it in here that um, remote accept attendance pursuant to this section shall be considered attendance for the purpose of establishing a quorum. She recommends that you have a quorum in house just for comfort level of the general public, um, you know. And then she also has yeah. a little bit in here that where she talks about the closed sessions that whoever is participating, if they are participating remotely and there is a closed session, they have to be completely isolated during that closed section. They can't have anybody anywhere near them. That means like Liz comes in and says, takes the dog, takes my little monkey, and shuts the door, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And you got to put a note out in closed session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, uh, you know, if you guys want to look at it, look it through yeah, and see if there's yeah. any issues, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we could put it on next month's Please, agenda sure. to right. approve it, and then you guys will be able to do this. Thank you. No Thank problem. You. Really yeah. She was able to get it done quick, so yeah, I was yeah, pretty happy. So. You're probably just looking for things to do now, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Village renewal information for November 3rd, 2020 election. Okay. Um, I got a little more detail. Phil and I, Phil pulled up some information for us. Um, on how we were getting the money and what, you know, where the money comes from within each township and what percent that they are actually paying into the millage. I guess there's really not a huge surprise um, as far as where we get the money from. Garfield is the largest contributor um, to the millage simply because they have more non residential properties. So um, you also then have, following up behind that, you do have Peninsula and you do have East Bay and Long Lake are right about the same. So those are your big character or big players in this. Um, the one thing I will say is we have gone back and it may not balance out every year that every township gets more than they've contributed, but over the course of this millage, everybody has received at least what they put into the millage, just because of the amount of money we've spent and added on through motor transportation funds. So when we start looking at this and we start talking about what we're going to end up with, um, and you start taking out the um, deductions, the um, Headley rollback stuff and everything else, we are gonna have a little bit more on the revenue side for the one mill. So it's going to go up, you know, a, a, a small amount. It's not going to be huge, but it will definitely make a little bit more revenue for everybody. Um, what we're looking at mainly here is above and beyond this information that we pulled together and saying, you know, look, we're spending more money in these townships than just the millage money so that we're pointing that out when we put out our informational packets. We want to get some feedback from you as a board as to what other things you want us to specifically call out in the information that we get ready here and get printed to send to the general I, public. I, I think a big go ahead. Please. Please. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, um, I think a big a big part of what we, we definitely need to present uh, one of the bigger arguments is going to be the increase in the condition of the roads each year and how it's, I mean, right. we, it's, it's just, it's going up and up and up. I mean, how, you know, how many, what percent is in, in good shape versus fair versus poor? <coughs> and, uh, and if you could track it back to the starting of the millage, yes. that's a good argument. Joe's already done that yeah. for, me, for the county. Trend lines. Yes. Just, and there was an article in one of the publications too that ranked by county, the best by, ones. By state. By state, state for the whole state. Yeah. Yes. And, and state we had, right. we're number eight. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've been number eight. But Lil and Aw and Wexford were right up there, too. Yeah, they were higher than us. Right. But Lil and Aw started a village earlier, too. Oh, long time ago. Yeah. 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 
So I, I think whatever publication was that, I think we need to quote that. You know, okay. I mean, um, I mean that's something to be, yeah. you know, that that's something to be proud of. I mean, if we're out of out of, out of five babies. Yeah. Well, how many? Maybe three counties. Maybe so we're that's uh, top ten percent. I, I think today's um, audit presentation is something else that we should mention. Yes. Uh, certainly, Phil's name should be included in that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Some of those who fill it. Get a picture there. Peter has a slide on our investment and net assets. Yeah. And we're yeah. far outpacing the depreciation on our road. And that's right. Up in the next slide he had was the revenue side. And you can see that the nice big gap in the millage that provides. Right. That directly to that. That's an independent audit. What do right. you say? That is an independent audit. Right. And yep. It speaks by. Right. And you're going to break that down by like local and primary, and I think you can do that too. So, on the website, when you go on, do you see the projects that we've done over the years? Like, I click on 2017 and see what roads were done? I don't believe so. We're working our way that way. Y'all have some, because I know, I know at one, one point we had a project list for a year or two, and I don't know if that's, I don't think that's been updated the last time I looked for several years. I think it's correct. Who's managing our in house? Who's managing our website? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the 2019 projects are listed. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, 2020. Okay. But this year's projects are listed. But are, do they go back 19, 18, 17? It's not what? Like, because we had several, when we did the renewal of the millage, the website had a section mm -hmm. of projects that had been done. Okay. Because if I'm in Green Lake Township and I'm going, I never see any roads being fixed in my township because the roads I happen to travel don't go across any of it. I don't think the road commission is doing any work there or Grant Township or Mayfield or any of those, even though they're traveling across 633, which we just read it, and they're traveling across. Um, I'm raising sure. Is the disinterested party, do they have literature? Still from our previous two literature or, no, or no, no, some no. bullet points. Or we something? have we have what was some, what was put out we the last out two education. times. Right. Okay. We have that, so and we have some stuff about. that we are going to re yeah. reuse from it, but some of it is well, time, 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 time. Yeah, it was it was like the certain road that we had done with the last four it years. Is, it has to be factual and right. informational only. Right, right. Yeah. promotion. Right, and I think far, this is all factual, an independent audit. And so, um, so, are we permitted to, on our website, to to have, it, you know, where it's not promotional, but it's like information about it? <laughs> I mean, if anybody knows about it, it, it I'm sure Joe is the Okay, express advocacy. We just can't say. In any of our literature or any of our paid locations, we can't say vote yes. We we want you to vote for uh, it, no express advocacy. Or we can say that we are a bunch of special people who do a really damn good job. Okay, and we can say that we can we can brag about the, the accomplishments we've made. We can say that this millage will do this. We can say that this millage provides a, a better transportation system for Grand Traverse County residents. We could say that the roads have never been in as good a shape, at least not in the last three decades, okay, um, as, as at the end of, of what is happening with this millage. And it continues to improve and we have projected improvements. We can say that we've, we've gotten uh, an outstanding audit. We can say that uh, uh, our assets are going up. Our, our, our assets, the, the community assets, because we are owned by the community, the community assets are increasing and there is there is little to no waste in our in our process and we're always looking for the best value. We can say all of those things. We just can't say vote well, yes or support us. Or well, we can say you can support us, but we can't say uh, you, you, we can't say please support the millage. We can't say please vote yes for the millage. We can say you can support your county road commission by looking at these 
at these positives that we bring to the community. For example, so you, so you can't support the milk. You can't. We can't. We cannot say vote yes or make a suggestion that expressly advocates a yes vote no. or a vote in any direction. Right. Really had anything to that effect. But since it's such a digitized world now, I think we need to. Let's make them a manager's comment. And, and, yeah, right. and the other thing that would be awesome, I don't know if it's possible, would be a map instead of just listing the projects, a map People showing the pictures. Because we've got, yeah. you've, I know you've got drawings. Well, yeah, tons yeah. of drawings. Yeah, can't you can't you just take? Uh, uh, can't you just? Because uh, <laughs> you've got the nothing else to do. Out, <laughs> um, but uh, but can uh, a map that just. Village project. Every every road that's green is a millage road project. And if you had done it will year by year, so I can click on every year of the millage, we can see what roads have been done. And then a total map. <laughs> How much are we gonna budget for this? Joke. Okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> get, well, we you know, to get a website expert in here to do screen. You're getting a little bit ahead of me. Yeah, just wait for the manager. All right, that's a good start. Okay. okay. Like we don't do that all the time. All right, because we're going to be coming to you here in the next month and then the month after that to finalize everything so we can get it out at the end of August for everybody that we need to mail it to. Okay. So that's really what we wanted to cover from that. Now, unless there's anything else. We can move into the Manager's my comments. comments here. Okay, number one. Um, <laughs> no. And um, <laughs> these the uh, we've got some good news in the fleet uh, area. We did get the new mower in, and we've had it out. It's doing great, and we have been using the arm on it. And I'm as sure. he's going along, he's getting all the way up above his head and clearing trees as he's going along and getting us higher than our trucks so, so we can have a clean so road. It rains it right off. Yeah, oh, takes yeah. it all right off. Oh, that was beautiful. Was going down set. South Airport by Best Buy earlier really. today. I'm like, oh, look at that. that <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we're, that's going great. And we've got a guy who really likes doing it right now. So he's doing it. He's learning quick. Boy, boy, yeah. And so we we that's working out well yeah. uh, for us. The low boy is in. We've used it several times already. We've moved the grader twice with it, and it actually fits nicely. So we didn't waste any time getting that up here, did we? No, no, we needed it badly. It's pointless to drive that grader for two hours to get across the county. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we've got it out, and it's, it's doing a good job. We are still moving forward on ditching. Um, and we now are the owners of a jetting machine, which we got from Elk Rapids in exchange for grading their alleys. Phil can tell you what the jetting machine costs us roughly. Yeah, it's less than a thousand in labor and with equipment and fringe and those charges was like about forty five hundred dollars or so. For a v, for a jetter that right now is probably we could turn around now that we've done what we needed to do to we could probably turn around and sell it for eighteen. So we're gonna have to sell a product. Uh, yeah. We can jet all of our own culverts. We're, 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 gonna, gonna, we're, we're gonna blow them up. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So um, and uh, we're gonna have training on it on the seventh of July. So all the guys will be getting out there. We're bringing the guys from Elk Rapids up to spend an entire day <coughs> with two different groups, a morning group and an afternoon group. So we have enough people that know how to use this. Um, and we already know that we've got about probably two and a half months of stuff that needs to be done with jetting and That's hitting great. some culverts. Yeah. And then maybe after let the Trevor City police use it for riot control. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you hurt people really bad with this. I'm not sure that <laughs> we, this is <laughs> okay. Um, next next <laughs> month, and I want I just would like you guys to think about it until next month. Um, we are finding a lot of deficient culverts within the we're blowing them off. Yeah. And we are finding a lot of them that are going to need to be repaired. Uh, Rick has been out and looked at them. 
He knows of about 16 of them that he wants to get jetted and then have Joe take a look at inspect them. and inspect them. But we think we're going to be running into some pretty substantial costs over the next couple of years to replace some culverts because a lot of them cannot be done with our in-house crews because they're live stream. Would you recommend that when we go through our budget process that we literally create a line item for that? Well, because what I also, yes. something we've done and I think we. Well, we talked about that when, when we went through and started inventorying them and I think we had a couple of interns worked all summer yeah, one time right. locating them and getting them yeah. on the maps and stuff that they're gonna be, we're basically gonna create um, a piece or management type plan. rating system for the culverts and also develop an SM management plan for the yeah. and create budget. You're right, Bill. We were gonna we were gonna have a GPS of where it was at, and then the inspection date and the size and just an condition and condition. Create an SM management plan for long term upgrading uh, of of uh, of culverts. And Joe was going to be doing all that, right? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. We're going to get a lot of money. But the, so yes, the biggest thing is, though, is is there, because in the cost sharing agreement that we have with all the townships, it says, which is kind of nondescript for us, and it kind of causes an issue. It says, local matches <coughs> on culvert replacements will vary depending on the cause for replacement and alternate sources of funding. So if someone can tell me what that exactly it doesn't, means, nothing. it doesn't help us for it what do you expect. who's asking us to yeah. do the work or <laughs> right. and so over fail, but not us, right? Well, well, no. Yeah. 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 But it's it's a, if they want to put in a fish passing cool cement one. And that's what we want. We want clarity is, are we paying for these 100% in-house? Are we asking townships for matching funds for repairing culverts? Or is it something that we, you know, I mean, just kind of like with the SADs, I mean, they're, they're basically prioritizing and, and saying to us, well, okay, you know, a particular SAD, they want to come together and they want to work with the Royal Commission. The township says, you know, this is good. We want, we want this too, or we're participating or we're, we are um, uh, putting our own money into this in some cases. Uh, maybe in, when we do our inspections and if we find some that, that need, we can explain to the townships uh, what the, uh, the consequences are if they are not met, if, the, if those things are not met. And, and frankly, you know, negotiate around that perhaps. Um, because I, I think, you know, certainly they have to be responsive to some of these, some of their neighbors, you know, neighborhoods and, uh, you know, they're, they're and this is something, you know, we, we, we will get into more discussion, obviously, next month. But I, I want you like guys to have time to kind of mold this around in your head as to what level, if any, are we asking townships? Okay, we want to keep going to uh, township well, for every road. Yeah, well, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, well, it's a relate. So like it collects. We had to take care of it. We had yeah, to. And that was on a primary road. Right. So that's, so, so that's statement you're right. There's absolutely nothing. If you stand it alone, but you put it back in where you read it, which was in under the participation of the townships. So then it, it this is what I interpreted then. If there's a special assessment district and there's culvert in there, and that culvert needs to be looked at at the time that SAD is being done, and it's bad, then it goes into it, the cost. Yeah. Right. It's all cost. Right. Okay. Now, if it is a um, a, a, a count our township road. Um, you know, that they just, the township wants to have done and they want to participate with us on it to get it done. Well, then we're going to check the culverts and there might be two on that road. And if they need to be done, then they're going to participate at that time. But if it's just, you know, blows out. Because it's 50 that, years old. That's on us. If there's no SAD or the township's yeah, not got a project. But at the time we're doing a project, we should we should replace and upgrade these, and it'll slowly improve this the whole asset of the zone. Call them that. But I, but I think but I think going through and actually blowing these things out and, and and inspecting at least we can give them the information they can work with and that we can. Okay. Well, well, I'll guarantee you there's a lot of the CMPs out there that are gone. Yeah. 
<laughs> There's not much no left in the bottom of them. Oh, they're they're rotten. rotted right out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they don't last forever. They're no. 40, 50 years. Hey, you gotta replace them. Do you replace them with similar? <laughs> so we've, uh, I mean, what are you putting in there? Okay, so we've kind of taken an approach on this. Um, gravel road, five to ten feet deep maximum, something like that. Can be, we can get it. Yeah. You know, even if it's a, you know, whatever. Um, so we're, we're looking at that now. If you get to a gravel road that's that maybe 20, 25 feet deep, we're going to think about that because that's not so, such an easy, easy reach. So we're going to look at something different there, you know, on there. It might be maybe a polymer coated CMP. It might be a, a and it's not going to be a double wall plastic. I can tell you that. Um, but maybe it would be a concrete or something like that. So we're going to be kind of looking at them. If it's a paved road, it's bare metal. I'd like to see uh, a polymer coated CMP. Polymer coated. These things, um, even if you're taking drainage right straight off a golf course or out of cedar swamp. 50 years later, if this is not all dinged up when you put that in, those are still operating. Yeah. Just beautiful. Okay. They're a little bit more, but you're only talking about maybe eight to ten percent more. Worth fully pays money. for itself. Yeah, worth the money. Yeah. Fully pays for itself, right? Now we talk higher, you know, higher uh, uh, um, on paved roads, you know, high traffic areas, you know, Hammond, Keystone, uh, things of that nature, or deep culverts. Concrete. Yeah. You know, there's your hundred year this. So when you're looking at these and because we're we're shutting down our freshwater tributaries everywhere because yep. of the nasty water been out of our so um are you guys looking at these as we can be contacting, you know, the Cod Unlimited organization so that we can work with the national to, to get grant funds as well as other money. So, um, right. yeah. so you know, you know, so we're we're working with we we're working with CRA and they are fantastic. Yeah, they, they are they are reaching out all over the place and bringing in funds. Yeah. And um, uh, so you know, um, Buckbeak Road or East Buckbeak Road. All right, that was you know CRA money's there. They mm -hmm. they went out and out and got those funds. Uh, we're looking at uh, Broomhead Road right now for uh, pulling out. Uh, there's a I think there's one large uh, um, uh, multi-plate there. Um, it's a, it, it impedes fish passage because it's too small and so you get too high velocity of water. Working with them, we're looking at replacement structure there. So yeah, so we're reaching out and, and looking at those and we want to try to provide the best crossing for that area. Um, so whether it be a, you know, like a timber bridge or maybe it's a three-sided box uh, culvert with the natural bottom. Those are the different things we want to be looking at. And in, when you get to live streams, that's we need to be a little bit more sensitive on that there because we want to make sure that we're the full uh, full lift bank on there, and yet the hydraulics are going to work, and we're not going to have you know future issues you know 20 30 years down the road, something of that nature. So, so yeah, we're we're looking to the future on the, on these here, you know. So we we kind of got ourselves some here's a bare minimum. You know, depending on what the you know what the type is or or, or what it is, if it's a cedar swamp or you're in an area like that, you got to have something like a like a polymer coated because then it's going to last. Because otherwise, that tannic acid just eats them out or you drain off the golf course. They got a lot of stuff. Uh, it's <laughs> not real nice to the to the to the metal culvert. So they eat them out, you know, in five to eight years. So, you know, we want to be looking at that long range and and looking also then as how much are you putting in? Because based on how easy to get out and replace it when it does go back, and do those cross mills for sure. Okay, Brad. Well, <laughs> but I'm just saying. Yeah. I want to make sure we're all on the same page because it is going to be very costly when we start doing these. I mean, these are not going to be cheap culverts on some cases, as we have to go through and replace them. So, on the other issue we have is. The erosion is picking up speed yeah. on the peninsula, and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, Are we going to lose the whole peninsula at some point? Yeah. It's it's in bad shape right now. We have some areas, and there's areas where Dwayne was standing, 
and looking at where we had to put a sock down, and that was what a month ago. Less. It was only a month ago. It was gone. And it's right? gone. Yeah. Where he was standing no longer exists. Yeah. Um, so we and the, the, the water is they they're water. saying right now the water has gone up almost six inches in the last month and a week. Mm -hmm. So a lot of water. Yeah. That's a lot of water. Yeah. And you know, they're not they're saying now that our peak, which would normally be in early July, is out at least to the early August range right now before we hit peak. So you know you're talking yes. probably another five inches, six inches of water. So we have some pretty serious needs. Um, there are some areas of road that are growing to the point where, you know, if we don't do something on bluff, we might as well turn it into two cul-de-sacs and call it a day because it is growing out there. And we still, they're not, I mean, we can't have a meeting big enough on site with some of the people because they won't come out to deal with all these things. So many of the groups out there are still holding to the, you know, non-on-site meetings. Is that trying, Eagle? Well, Eagle or Army Corps and all that stuff. They are not, you know, they're still, they're so backlogged, first of all, because they didn't do anything for the last three months. But we're waiting, we're on a list for them to come up and look at some of these areas that are more substantial than what we can deal with. Um, we've got one that we got lucky. There's a stretch of road on Penn Drive that we are going to be able to have them do while they're working on the uh, sewer lift station that's right there. They have already got the permits to work in the water which is great because otherwise, you know, you get 12 foot high or 11 foot high uh, power cables that you can't work under to get that built. So they'll be able to get it built and repaired. But you know, I mean, these are just, they're adding up quick. The, the state has got three now on the center. At least. Yeah, they've got at least three on the center that are failing that we're going out there to fix for them because you know, I mean, they they can't. They don't have the pieces. These, the these, these are these are on the. There's the one that goes off of center, where it kind of is no. It's right in the middle of the peninsula. It's not near the water at all, but it's so high up, and the rain has been so significant. Oh, it's washed out the washed bank. Out. There's another one by a, a building that it was just all this water dropping off, and you know, so we're having to help the the state get in there to do all the work for their, their stuff. So you're saying Plus, the state can't handle all the work out there and we're doing it for them again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, the uh, whole idea out there on the peninsula is we need to have an idea of how are we going to deal with these? Because realistically, you know, there's, it's every bit of 2 million and plus for that section of Bluff Road, right? Wow. I think it'd be easy to say we don't have two million dollars to spend on what I'm gonna call the sex. Not less. The residents probably aren't real thrilled about that opening back up with the traffic slowing down on the street. I mean, I could be wrong, it's probably one or two are mad. Well there's they, there's the people that have their docks there that are a little upset because they can't have docks because now it's harder. a sheer cliff. But you know, I mean, yeah, yeah there's the right another problem. So there's other issues that so, come up. So if we were to put cul-de-sacs down there, are they going to erode and fall into? Or would we do that? We do it. We build it up. We would do it far enough back away from what's currently eroding that we would have the ability to have a long time before we'd get there. At least three months. <laughs> and then you know, we would probably have to do some reinforcement of the linear linear peak wise. What is what is the distance? I mean, basically, if you had to set up two cul-de-sacs, okay, engineer, uh, what would be from the, the end point of uh, cul-de-sac A to the end point of cul-de-sac B, and what, what would the distance be? I think we're working. 
1,000, 1,200 feet. That that much. And there's no and there's no drive coming up to the area that's. So right now, if we put the cul-de-sacs in and, and build those up, we can preserve the entrances and exits of all the property owners on that road. Yeah. Would we do that in the mindset that this is a permanent situation? Or are we doing it in the mindset like that. that this is what we do now and then in 15 years or 10 years when we're in a low cycle that we could go back and we could open up and reinforce it? That would be up to the board if they wanted to do something like that. My mindset is at this point, you're going to have so much. At, if you don't do something to it now in the next year, it's going to be beyond fixing. I don't think it's going to be the type of thing you'll be able to go so back. So call the stack, but then fixing it so that it's protected from erosion. Is what I mean. Well, you, no, I'm saying if you if you don't fix it and you put call the stacks and wait five years, there's not going to be anything left to fix. Right. Well, you're saying that there's a two and a half million dollar repair right now as it is. I would say. Would you say about two million? It's probably it would probably take all of that. Yeah, and, and, and that's no guarantee either. Because it's it's rocks and sugar. Sugar. Yeah, I mean, and we can't arbitrarily go and do that. I mean, that's up to the core and Eagle and everybody yeah, else. I mean, right. we had to go through all kinds of. Oh, well, yeah, this is. Yeah, but this yeah. is the difference with, 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 with what they're working with with people are typically places where the road is, you know, maybe five feet or that their properties may be five feet above the water. We're 20 feet above the water. Yeah. So it's so, not like we're not talking about just building up a rock embankment here. Right, we're right. talking about driving sheet piling in yeah. or something to support this. There's, 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 bridge, there's, right. I mean, there's, there's a good chance. Yeah. If, I mean, in order to do this right, we'd have to have something done outside of the right away, right? Okay. Yeah, because the people yeah. that used to have property on the other side of the right of way have right. nothing right now right. because it's all underwater. Right. It's washed away and it's gone. Yeah, it's not going to come back. Well, no, I mean, and even nothing, when the water drops, we're gonna the level of it is so much lower. The, the role, if, if we do nothing and it continues the way it is, I mean, it's, is it, it going to eat its way through our cul-de-sacs eventually? That's what I'm thinking. Well, well that's well, just well, it, is we would be, we okay. would have, there's quite a bit of space where we could push it Only on, the on the south side. Yeah. The north side, we'd have to probably still do some supporting it. That's both but on the that, south on side, the side, on the south side, we are far away yet from the lawn. The north side, yeah, you probably still have some supports to do. Well, I think it comes down to two sets of things. Number one, we don't have two and a half million dollars to fix it, even if we could and had the authority to do it, which we don't. Um, Must so. get it covered under somehow it's just. COVID is responsible or something. <laughs> <laughs> because three months it, 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 funny enough, it is because if it weren't for That's the true. budget deficit, we would have been, we been No, the state was going to give money to all of the town, all of the communities that were suffering from erosion. The state right. was setting up a fund to give to these to us to fix areas like that. But now that they've got you know a couple billion dollar deficit, they're no, they they're don't have the money to give to well, it. But there is the fact that you can't get that fix out there from an environmental agency and the Army Corps to look at it that it continues to get worse. That's on them. If, if you have a, they got to start being cooperative a little bit. Well, and, and we're hoping, you know, we're hoping that in the, in the July time here, they're going to make it out to us. How much is it going to cost to keep up? I'll go back to you again. <laughs> the, uh, is it going to be gravel or paved? I mean, it's uh, so, you know, we could probably, you know, get them out for 25 to 30,000. Um, but to his question, then, if we put money into those, is it just going to continue to eat away in the road? Because in between the two of them, yeah. yes. Yeah. Wow. yeah, you'd almost have to just basically write it off to being gone. And it's just so going to wash away. Yeah. Yeah. Water is pretty powerful. Yeah. Right. 
fire gun control. And if anybody ever wants to go out and look at it, let me know. I'll go out there and take you on a great tour. Carl went out and he's like, oh, wow, wow. Well, they, they were concerned about the one. Brad says the guy's concerned about where we had him stop and he wanted it moved to the north. And I said, no, 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 we're going to move it to the south. Yeah. This is because there's another spot that, I mean, it's just sheer straight up and down. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's clay and straight up and down. The bluff. It's now it is never a bluff. The road. It's no longer yeah. bluff road, it's a bluff. It's, 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 it's pretty bad. Yeah. So, it's pretty bad. Well, there's no place to go because yeah, it's not yeah, our right. choice. I mean, it's mm -hmm. Army Corps, it's Eagle, it's everybody and else. So before July's meeting, we hopefully will have met with them. It is. So we can't put all the money in there. Right. We, we need to get some options. Well, we need to get the Corps out there yeah. to find out what that's yeah. going to be. And then I guess we should probably have some halfway close estimates on whether it be gravel or pavement, part of both. You know, what that is. And and how how viable? I mean, best guess how viable is that option of two cul-de-sacs? You know what's you know. At the very least, we have to do something to get that's... something though to stop yeah. the erosion from progressing any further. Right? And we're going to need to do something for winter to get the trucks to turn around if we can't get the road going. So at least that's another. They they uh, did it last they, year. Yeah, they did it last year because mm -hmm. that was shut down. Because it was shut down through the winter last year. But so. it probably wasn't yeah. ideal that's for right. them. No, and, and right of way no. would have to be obtained in order right. to, to develop some type of a turnaround. Right. Um, so. So I guess get the core here and then, you know. Figure that it sounds out. easy. Well, Let's call the core. Well, well we're, we we're, the, they, they did say when I last called and talked to the lady from the core, she said they are slowly catching up. And she thought in July she would be able to come up. And then it's, is it Luke? Is that his name? Yeah. She, she said when she's available, she'll contact him and bring up Eagle up too. And we'll have a nice meeting on site. But, you know, it's going to be pricey. And what we do, no matter what, is going to be something that's going to take some time because it's going to be getting the permits. It's going to be getting the design. And the problem is it's eroding so fast by the time you get around yeah, to doing it. It's going to change. It's, it's going to change. The ship's supposed to be participating in this because that's a local work. So it's a whole We're just looking at the time, Carol. We probably. Yeah, we're getting close. We're just ahead. about. With, yeah, I just have. We're just about done. Yes. Last, last thing. Um, we interviewed for the superintendent. And we have found a replacement for our superintendent. And while we were in the process of interviewing, we had our number two contestant for the position turned out to be everything we need for an IT person and a GIS person. And so we're also bringing him on board. And so all that stuff you were talking about, about putting up on these maps, and getting all this information. He just got done setting up the county's GIS system Excellent. for them. So he knows exactly how to connect to it. He's been a consultant. He's worked for the city of Traverse City. He's worked for TCLP. He grew up and went to school here in Traverse City. If he just finished the county system, the county has improved. I just used it the other day and it's a lot better than yes. what it was. Yes, he optimized everything. So it's much, much faster. Good. And so he is coming on board and he is going to take us into the future and make us more or less a paperless um, system. We're going to implement a online citizen request um, program so that we can allow the citizens to do give that? us feedback. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. Right. You take something on a picture on your phone and send it and you know exactly right. where it is. We'll go out and fix it. You're all done? I'm done. Okay. Okay. I, I want one little quick update from Wayne on what we discussed prior to the meeting as far as what we have going yep. on the south end of the building. So on, on May 5th, I uh, sent an email to the um, to Mr. Robert Hunt from the county for the uh, uh, electrical loads that he had requested. Uh, with the with the program this uh, last year 
as they had approved the electrical box um, and then things were tested, we had some brownouts happening over on in, in this part of the, you know, in, in the administration uh, building. So he had requested uh, electrical loads by a, by a, a, a professional electrical engineer. Um, that didn't happen for quite some time. Uh, issues between the between the players, the the the, uh, um, the general yes. contractor and the architect. Um, so in the end, um, when we dissolved that and got rid of that, that's we then worked with a a local uh, company on that, and then uh, um, he went through, did all of his load calcs. If everything in there at one particular moment was running, we exceed, we would exceed the box. As he put though into his email, and he allowed me to use his email and, and, and sent it off also to, to uh, Mr. Hunt, was because this system is automated and it's a step system as you go through there, you'll never have that happen with exceeding the, 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 the ability of the box. But based on what we had there, we did go ahead and we removed the blower unit system uh, from that electrical box, thereby keeping that box total load underneath of what it is rated for. It's still operational if we hooked it up to a, a different box and, and used that. We don't actually use the, the blowers right now. We're actually finding it's too close to the last sprayer. And so you get the blowers fighting the last sprayer uh, for the bridge spray. So it's <laughs> the blowers are disconnected. Um, I've not heard anything back from Mr. Hunt, so I'll reach out to him Just again to uh, <clears> confirm that. <throat> <it. laughs> I'll, I'll reach out to him again so that he confirms that he's received that and so that we can get that um, um, that electrical permit final out and, and then get the, get that out buttoned out. Okay. And then, then the issue with, with the motor that got replaced. Um, yep. So the motor, um, while we had the, uh, had them in here looking at that, they, they kind of reviewed through all the electrical on that. They didn't find anything out of normal. Uh, uh, ranges were all within specs, and it theorizes that we just had a bad motor. Um, so the motor was replaced by our crews. Um, we've never heard anything back. I did inquire with Hydrochem on that particular motor. Does did was something else? Do we need a soft start or anything of that nature? With all their other systems that they've had around, they've never had an issue with with that system, with that motor, no soft, soft start needed. New motor was put in, and it's been running ever since. I'm waiting for the end to John again. <laughs> <laughs> nope. so, so, so other than the blowers, the system is up and running as intended. Um, and the it's doors taken, working right? Taken care of. The, the doors, we were never able to get that resolved. So... Um, I think again, it's, it's it's we got so much compacted into there. So we just changed the timing on the doors. So we had to we changed the timing on the doors. We triggered all off of the so, so okay, okay, um, nothing. nothing. Uh, just on the letter that we received that letter from uh, <laughs> uh, just addressing the town line South Airport uh, right of right of way. Did you did you get a copy of that? I believe I believe they were the, the, you're talking about the development that's happening out yeah, there. Yeah, the development that's happening. They they were concerned that they're that we're cutting more into them than we normally do. Uh, that's for the expansion of, of the right of way on the airport, and what we were asking from oh, the development. Oh, okay. the mid, mid no. departments. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know we shared with them the, our requirements and our standards that uh, uh, for that particular. Uh, classification road in accordance with the as as defined by the national functional classification of that road and we have what, uh, what we have um, normally we're saying 120 feet total of, of road right of way got it um, yeah. I did point out to them that if they felt that that was excessive our standards do allow for an exception that they would have to request that 
to, to uh, come in uh, before you as the board for that uh, uh, to make that uh, request. And that would allow it to step down to the next size, which would then be a hundred foot of road right away. Um, they, you know, inquired us with us on, on several things there. Um, uh, we kind of stated our positions that we were being flexible and, and allowing quite a bit because neither of the commercial driveways that they had proposed would fit uh, based on the, the speeds and the traffic that's out there. Right. Neither of these would be would meet our 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 specs for a a, uh, a commercial driveway. Uh, what was there before were residentials, so you always give exceptions for residentials on that. So uh, so it's kind of back in their court where they were going and looking at that and deciding what they want to do. I just I'm just curious forward. because I get this letter, you know, and I, I went through and I looked at the. Uh, of course, they threw out the arrows, but I just the, my question was about the. The right of way, and okay, so for that classification of the road, we have an expanded right of way Correct. versus what we might have on a common street, six feet, seven feet, or whatever that is. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Okay. Thank you. Good. Oh. No, I think we've said it. Okay. <laughs> I'm good too. All right. Um, second public comment. Yeah, I'm just uh, wondering. Uh, State your, your name. My name is Bob Erickson, 625 Monroe Street. Um, here representing City Church, just down the way here. Okay. We're concerned about the uh, roundabouts that were mentioned in the paper. Um, just want to know what phase you're in on that. City Church. It's, it's, they, they picked up the, uh, the property down all the way down. The there. old school. Yeah, yeah the old. Three, three. Yeah. Oh. We don't have a roundabout going there. Uh, down, 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 in down the corner, right. down, down at, right. yes, all. at this point, I, I mean, it's we're in the design phase. So yeah. okay. we are looking at Cass and Keystone, and then River and Keystone, um, but we are not looking at anything at Keystone and Hammond right now, except, except for a change first. in striping to allow two left turn lanes off of Hammond so that they would go, we'd be able to clear more traffic off of Hammond and then they'd merge. But other than that, there's nothing in that stretch between uh, Hammond and, what's that, Fife then? Potentially for him, that, 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 that might affect, you know, his his access there more than even the roundabouts. You know, so yeah, I don't know, I'm sort of concerned. Yeah, and it, it's, uh, uh, if you have any questions and you want somebody to meet you on site, we can definitely send somebody out there to go over it with you and have any concerns addressed. Okay. That's good. All Thank right. you, Brad. Blue card. Blue card. And you got Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming all three of you were together. Right. Yeah. Uh, either you two want to speak or, or no? Basically, no. Uh, I guess the thing is, don't believe the record Eagle stand. <laughs> 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 we, we already got Mark. We didn't say Mark's that. On that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So you guys are all set. We are. We're thank you. We're all set. Okay. We're, we're going to make a motion here. You, you spend it in the up with the card, but I think somebody's going to make a motion. Just make that motion. Move to adjourn. Second. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> He's like, how do I do that?